All right, it looks like everything is good. We are here for our live stream. We're getting plastered in memory of my good friend, Patrick Turner, who was with me in the Navy. So I got my Navy hat. And it'll be hard to see, but I do have my old rating insignia on this hat. I'm not a big hat wearing guy. They do make my head hurt after a while. But it just seemed appropriate. Got my Japanese Atari shirt on since I met the guy in Okinawa. But first, I am doing my job correctly. Hello, Bob. Chug, chug, chug. You know it. I'm doing my job because I went to get some mead from uh, Jake's. And all the white winter cider was sold out. Most of their sweet was sold out. And all of um, Chaucer's regular, as well as that Polish one that I bought, the raspberry and um, Solu's traditional honey mead were just sold out so i picked up the last bottle of solu's blackberry and because it has been mentioned here many times before we have white winter blueberry i made the joke the other day that a raven bear mead would have to be these two combined so we're gonna try that uh, this one's open this is why i started the stream late because i decided i had the bottle i'm gonna film a video for it real quick it's probably the shortest video I've ever done for one of these, and it's probably pretty crappy. But let's go ahead and put a bit of that blueberry in this little glass here. And then we'll go ahead and crack open our blackberry. Because I would like to try this first before I just mix them into this huge tankard. That just seems like a bad idea. It's like, what if it's, what if it's horrible? I mean, I'm going to drink it, but who knows how long the, the, the stream will last then. So we'll go ahead, mix that blackberry in there, swirl it around a bit, like a fancy old man listening to jazz music. <laughs> we are doing this. This is awesome. So, blueberry. Blackberry. It might not be able to take the whole thing. It did. It took the whole thing. It is, there's no way I can show this off, but it is right at the rim of this. Down the road here for me is an old hollow tree where you lay down a dollar or two, then you go around the bend. You come back again, and there will be a jug of that good old Mountain Dew. <laughs> I thought you were in the Army. No, no, I was Navy all the way, man. Well, not all the way, because I was a chaplain's bodyguard, so I was with the Marine Corps. But I was in the Navy. No Village People songs, please. So, we have mixed. So it was Blackberry Thumper with White Winter's Blueberry Mead to create Raven Bear Reserve. You can make your own at home now. Before I start playing some Kirby, I would like to tell a story about my good friend Patrick Turner. We were in Korea, just outside uh, Osan Air Base. That's me, Patrick, and uh, the chaplain that we're with. I won't give his name. I don't know if that'd be cool or not. We go to this bar. Now, at the time, I don't drink, and, and they're just having beer. And they've got these mugs... And about this size, probably a bit thicker so they didn't hold as much, but about this size. Oh, man, I'm losing precious mead. Mm. Sweet, sweet nectar. So, the chaplain says to Patrick, I'll have a beer with you. So Patrick goes up to the bartender. Me and the chaplain go find a place to sit down. And Patrick goes, two. But the bartender doesn't give him two of these, these glasses. Now, he gives him two pitchers. You gotta think, if this is the standard mug size, you can imagine what a pitcher would have looked like here. So he comes back to the table with these two huge pitchers, and <laughs> I'm not even sure who can carry. I mean, this is like a true mini keg. So I'm in the chaplain drinking, and I'd say they each had two pitchers, and they're the big pitchers, and they each have two of these, so four together, and they're about halfway through the first pitcher. And the chaplain's like, 
I'm pretty much done. And Patrick goes, I can't drink this alone. And so every airman that came in there, since we're outside Osan, every soldier, every sailor, every marine that came in, grab a glass, we'll give you some. It's on us. And we saw a lot of our own guys from our own units. Like, hey, chaplain's office, take care of its own, right? <laughs> so they're drinking these, and they get the first pitcher drunk. And they're on the second one, and we get about halfway through the second one, and then it's getting late. Nobody else is really coming in. Nobody's really drinking any. At this point, Patrick probably drank most of that second pitcher and about half of that first one, just him. So, <laughs> you know how it is when you're drunk, right? Like, you're sitting still, and you're fine. It's when you get up, and then all the alcohol hits you at once, right? It's just getting late. I'm like, man, we got to get our hit our bus back to our our, our campsite. Cause we're actually staying at a Korean Navy Navy base. They're doing uh, war games. So Patrick kind of looks at this this pitcher that's just sitting there, and he's just kind of like, <sighs> fine. Grabs it because it's got about half full. And he chugs the thing, sets it down, and I shit you not, looks at me, looks at the chaplain, and goes, "Come on, gentlemen, we got a bus to catch." Stands up. Walks out the door. I mean, the chaplain are just kind of looking at each other. It's like, we got to follow him. He's going to collapse. We go down the stairs because this place is on a second floor. We walked about 10 miles to the Osan Gate. He's walking in a straight line. I mean, the chaplain are looking at each other like... And like he can read our minds, Patrick just turns his head, smiles, and goes, 20 years of nothing but vodka. Beer is like water to me. And that is how that man partied. And that is how we are going to party in honor of him today. We did not stop till we reached the bottom of this thing. So if you got one to drink, raise it up to our good friend, Petty Officer First Class Patrick John Turner. May he rest in peace. But you're not here to just listen to me ramble on and on. You want to see some Kirby. And I got some other games here set up. Got the Rocketeer just because it's one of my favorites. Puss in Boots. I figured it went along good with Kirby. It's a more lighthearted, fun game. And because we're doing this for the Navy guys, Popeye. Because it was Popeye or Top Gun, and I don't have a copy of Hunt for Red October. So, Popeye. I would have loved to have done like a Donald Duck game. There was a Donald Duck game released on the NES, but only in Japan. It did come out in the U.S., but it came out as um, Snoopy's Silly Sports Spectacular Nobody cares for that game. So here we go. Kirby's Adventure. Delete save data. Mm, how are you doing today, Mr. Hammerstone? Could be a little more active here today. I got you to play off of, like, I play off of you and your streams. I don't quite have your charisma, but I am going to try. And give you my anecdotes about my times with Patrick Turner. So... I'm going to go ahead and give the sad story first. The story of how I found out about his death. Because he had retired from the Navy like late 20, 2005. Did his 20 years. And uh, we kept in contact a little bit. And then Katrina happened. And he was from the New Orleans area. So Katrina happens. I knew he was in New Orleans. I figured he was probably fine. And just things were busy. I mean with all the cleanup and everything. And so I'm stationed in Bremerton, Washington at this point in time. And every lunch hour, I'd go to some website. I don't even remember what the website was. But they would have all these, like, true crime sto uh, stories and stuff. And I would just pick one out at random and read it. So I see one one day. It was, like, murder Navy officer or something. And I was like, oh, that, that could be interesting. So start reading it. And it's time about this, Navy, this retired Navy chaplain who was murdered. And I was like, really, yeah? chaplain i i'd never heard of this and it says he's going to university of new orleans and that uh yes first place sorry about that that he was going there for accounting and all this and i was like man this sounds just like patrick and uh, a lot of times with the with the religious program specialists a lot of people would think we were chaplains and i was like well unless they give me a name i don't know it could it could just be a coincidence and about halfway through this thing, I see the name Patrick Turner. And I was like, holy shit, you know. And the RP's air, uh, job, at, at the time at least, I don't know how it is now, but it was pretty small. Like, everybody knew everybody else because there was only a handful of us. 
So I'd ask around some of the guys, and, and everyone's like, no, I didn't know, I didn't hear about that, man. And you hear people, they go, either they knew Patrick or they knew who he was. And, but nobody had heard about him being being murdered. And I, you know, looked into all this online, reading everything I could. Ooh. Sorry, train of thought. Um, so anyway, the story, as it officially goes, is that he took somebody back to his, uh, he was living in the dorms at University of New Orleans, going back to school, 42 years old, about to start a whole new chapter in his life after retiring from the Navy. Uh, they said there's no sign of forced entry, so they figured they, he must have just brought the person back. And that uh, the person strangled him, stole his wallet, his keys, and his car. They didn't find the body till about a week later on Halloween. So they don't even know when it really happened. Um, I've heard that they think there might have been sexual overtones to it. Which, it was kind of one of those funny in hindsight things. Once I read that, it was... Because, you know, you're thinking it's probably a guy who did it. Could have been female, but probably a guy. And I read that and I was like, Patrick wasn't... Oh, well, yeah, actually, they kind of give off that vibe. I mean, people say that about me, too, so maybe, maybe... Who knows? Never heard it from him, so don't know. So... That was just, you know, I found out six months after the fact, and I've been keeping track of the story for the past 13 years, and there's been no developments. Wait, Winter, we got to get on this, guys. This is fantastic. I'm watching my kids and watching you. Rip Mr. Pat, that's cold, bro. It is, it is cold, man. So, Patrick was the type of guy... No, nobody, nobody should be murdered. Well, okay, so you got your guys like there's, there's, there's few occasions like somebody like Hitler, somebody really should have stopped that guy. So I guess I can't really sit here and say nobody should ever be murdered. But in the general populace, nobody really should be murdered. Patrick was the type of guy who I can sincerely say it shouldn't ever happen to him. This is a guy who would go to the E Club on a Saturday night. And play the nickel slots. He would tell me he'd just give himself a, 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 a limit. Like he'd take like $100 and just play like legit. The nick, you know, five cents. Pull the thing, you know. He would do it so much. And with $100 in nickels, you can do quite a lot. So more, more than once, probably at least once a month, he would like hit it big. He'd jackpot and he would, you know, win like three, four hundred bucks. And this is the type of guy who would then turn around, go into the bar, go, hey, I just won $300, drinks are on me, give the 300 to the bartender and keep him coming till, till that runs out. That's the type of guy that Patrick Turner was. He, he was uber generous like that. He, he was just the nicest guy. And it really is a shame that that sort of thing happened to him. And, and, you know, 20 years in the Navy, as a bodyguard for Navy chaplains, who knows, like, the stuff he saw and probably survived to go out like that is just, it don't make sense. What? It could happen to any of us, you know? So. So for the longest time, and I told the story last Halloween in a video I did about it, I, I would always get depressed around Halloween, and I still do. I mean, this past week I've just been totally bummed, and I've had a lot of personal stuff going on as well. And my fir my first thought was it just had to do with that. Ooh, I made a big mistake here. And then I started thinking about Patrick, and I was like, oh, it's within that week towards Halloween. And I just started thinking about him and just having those memories of all the good times. It's like, oh man, he was such a great guy, and I just felt he. I just felt so much better. I was like, I've got to do something. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to do a stream for him. I'm thinking about him being this, this guy who liked to party and drink. He, he was not, he was not a mean drunk. Okay. It's not like the Joker and, uh, the dark Knight, where it's like, daddy was a joke, was a drinker and a fiend. He's like the opposite end where it's like, Patrick was a drinker and a full on party animal in, in the best sense. So I was like, yeah, we'll, we'll try and combine that somehow. 
So I was like, yeah, we'll just play some lighthearted, really fun games that we can't take too seriously. Have some mead, because I don't do vodka. I always like the freeze powers in this game. Freeze and the ice one. So, yes, here we are. And I'm not the type to just chug this sort of thing. He needed a bodyguard. Yeah, I suppose he did. And to be in Katrina, like, right after the, uh, or to be in New Orleans right after Katrina hit, that's something else, too. That's some, that's some crazy shit. I had looked him up this past week. And I found one of the articles I remember reading back in the day, but it had um, the original date of the article being like November 2006. And then it had a updated on like July 7th or something, and it was like there was no year given. So I was wondering, like, was it updated? Because that, that one said they had a suspect in custody, but I couldn't find anything else. I don't know if I were to call like the New Orleans Police Department, if they'd even like tell me what was going on. Kirby is awesome. Kirby is hella awesome. So I had said this the other day, but my, my childhood teddy bear was named Kirby, and I meant to go get him out of my storage unit and have him sitting here for but that that didn't happen. It has nothing to do with the game. It was always just a coincidence. Ah. Uh. So I told this in my video last year. I'm going to tell the story again now. But me and my buddy Luca were out doing our martial arts training one night on the beach. At Naha Beach. That's something we like to do about once a month. And we'd go, like, spar, like, in the surf. And we, we, we had this idea one night. We thought it would be funny to recreate the final fight scene from the Kung Fu movie Rage of the Masters. Where that Kung Fu dude fights the Muay Thai fighter. So we, we kind of went separately this night. Like we, we left base together because we had to leave base together. But then we kind of went our separate ways and met up again on the beach like 20 minutes later. He comes walking from one end of the beach. I come walking from the other. This is like the perfect level to tell the story on. And uh, he's in the, the Muay Thai fighter outfit. I got the Kung Fu, uh, Kung Fu outfit on, you know. We're like quoting the movie. We like completely memorized the fight and had it choreographed. And we're just, it's the two of us at like nine o'clock at night on a beach. There's nobody else there. We're doing it for nobody but ourselves. Well, it turns out there was a group of teenagers out there hanging out. And they, they saw the whole thing and they thought it was hilarious. And we start talking to them. And they mentioned that the following week was Halloween. And they're like, hey, if we, we come back here this time next week. That was dumb of me. They're like, if we come back here at this time next week, would you bring us candy? And we're like, hell yeah, we'll do that. So I told Patrick about this. And uh, he's like, hey, this is a great idea. He's like, I'm going to get in on this. Gives me like 50 bucks. 50 bucks. Do you have a sword? What type? I will get back to that in a minute. So he, he gives me like 50 bucks to, to spend to buy... Uh, candy for these Japanese teenagers that he never even met. And I don't remember what happened, but somehow we totally forgot about it. We went off base that next Friday night. We just kind of were walking around uh, Naha City. We're at this little spot we know that made like the best American breakfast ever. They had like the thick Texas toast and these unbelievable scrambled eggs that like no other Americans knew about the spot. And I was, like, I was like, oh man, I was like, I forgot. I was like, Patrick gave me uh, money for, uh, so we could buy candy for those kids at the beach. And he's like, and Luca's like, oh man, I totally forgot about that. And so did I. And I just always felt bad about that. So he says, are you going to give him the 50 bucks back? And tell him what happened. And I says, honestly, he's the type of guy who would feel really bad for the kids. I don't want to put him through that, so I never told him that we never that we totally forgot. He never asked me about it. If he had asked me, I would have told him. But uh, you know, he never he never said anything about it. Love the wheel. Oh, how do you push pause? Oops, that is not pause. Come back here. I need you. I love how you push pause. 
You get the little flavor text on what the power does. <laughs> I should not be driving drunk up, but, you know, whatever. I'm not drunk, so it's okay. I can already feel it, though. I mean, combining those two might not have been the smartest idea as far as alcohol content. <laughs> uh, like, like my story at the beginning about him, you know... You know, you don't really realize you're drunk till after the fact when you stand up the first time. I got a feeling I'm going to be okay until I beat this game and I get up to switch cartridges. Then I'm going to have a problem. But yeah, so Patrick always thought that we, we had gone ahead with our plan to buy all this candy and give it out to these kids. And I do not regret not telling him the truth about that one. Like, he, he would much happier that way. Okay, kids don't need all that candy. Yeah, right, exactly. Swords. So, you know, I'm big into martial arts. Um, I studied uh, Yang Style Tai Chi Chuan as well as Shaolin Kung Fu. Those were my two big ones. I've also, when I was in the military, I, I started doing cross-training with people, so I got a lot of Muay Thai in there, which was great because um, actual Tai Chi with with like, not just the Qigong stuff that you see the old people do in the mornings. Doesn't have a whole lot of kicks. It's got a few, but they're all, like, below the knee. And it's kind of a f strange philosophy, because you see people training in Tai Chi, and, you know, they're always doing it, like, super slow. I didn't care about the secrets. I'm just playing the game. I have beaten this game at 100% completion before, though. But, yeah, actual Tai Chi, it, um... Most of the kicks are below the knee... Because to kick higher than the knee is, one, too slow, ironically. It's, just, it's considered to be too slow, and it's you're leaving yourself more open. So I started, one of the things that I did a lot of, especially with my buddy Luca, was I did a lot of Muay Thai to really up my game and kicking. Uh, the neat thing about Tai Chi is the way you can kind of interpret the different movements in so many different ways. For me, I used it more for grappling and joint locking. So I did also do, study a little bit of wrestling and uh, jiu-jitsu with some of the other Marines out, that was there to help me improve with that. Uh, swords is interesting because, like, the different Tai Chi styles, Yang, Sun, Chen, all that, they all have their own uh, sword styles. And I've studied the Yang, like, two different ones that the Yang family had done. And then I did a lot with uh, the Shaolin stuff. But... Uh, Luca was big into fencing, uh, like, and he did multiple Asian styles as well, but he also did a lot of um, European styles, and he, he had helped teach me in that. I, I taught him Tai Chi, and he taught me, um, it was an Italian fencing style, and then later on I also looked into a, um, a German longsword and Polish saber. So, as far as owning swords, I do not have any at the moment. I have I have one, and it's a movie replica. I'll get to that in a minute, because there is a story for that. But as far as, like, martial arts-wise, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm well-versed in using a sword. That's why I kind of made a big deal in the Master of Darkness video about how that's clearly not a saber. <laughs> and I even used a clip of where there's a, a skeleton holding a saber, and it's like, that that's a saber, like... You can see that curved blade on it. But anyway, um, I have a one. It is a, um, a replica. Oh, I, I should tell the story first. So there's this really famous store in Mayfair Mall in Milwaukee. It sells Egyptian. It focuses Egyptian imports, but they do other stuff as well. And they have a lot of swords in there. They're just decorative ones. And I worked there right after high school. I had no intention. I used to have a bunch of swords, some real, some decorative. Pretty much had to leave all that North Carolina when I moved back to Wisconsin. So I'd gone in that store one day, and they'd asked me if they had some swords, and they're like, yeah, you should buy some more. And I was like, I'm not going to buy anything like this. I was like, especially these items that are, like, really expensive, and they're, they're not even functional. They get the sword in. It's got this scabbard that has... The strange writing on it. I like the cold steel sword. Do you know anything about them? I do, actually, yes. I know exactly what you're talking about. Um, I have a picture of the sword, me holding the sword. Oh, crap. That I can post up on, on my Instagram later if you want. 
my my obligatory I'm a macho guy holding the sword across my back picture. But anyway, this this scabbard had this weird writing on it. And they're like, you're good. You know about swords and you know different languages. Can you? Hey, James, welcome to the stream, man. Good to see you. It's James Gruesome of the Excess Gaming Podcast and the owner of my old Bubble Bobble Arcade Cabinet. And, and also just an all-around cool guy. Big, big fan of the Yakuza series. He will turn anybody into a Yakuza. I've not even played the games yet, and I'm a huge fan because of this man. So, my sword. The, the like, one sword I currently own. I, um... This thing had this weird writing on the scabbard, and because I study languages just as a hobby, and obviously martial arts, especially gun and sword play, because you got to have that modern with that ancient, right? you got to be able to use a sword and a gun. So they asked me if I, I would be willing to look into what's on the sword. They said they had two versions of the sword, and they were willing to sell me the one that was in the store currently, and they gave me they gave me some ridiculous deal because they wanted something like three or four hundred dollars for it, and they sold it to me for like a hundred even. If I could find out what this writing was on it, I saw the stream and wanted to comment. Had to open the app, but I'm here digging the martial arts talk. Oh, we got plenty of that. So I spent months. My first my first thought when looking at it was maybe it's like Sanskrit, but. It was really curvy, and Sanskrit's more of a jagged, lot of right angles type. And I couldn't figure this out, and then it occurs to me, oh boy, the laser, I like the laser. I'm like, well, the blade, it's like this huge, um, it's like this huge butcher type blade. I was like, this was a common style of sword in the Burmese area of India. I was like, so, this must be a Burmese sword, so it's probably from India, but, you know, the Indian language has, like, Something like a thousand different dialects. There's like, you know, so that, I'm like, I didn't really narrow it down any. <laughs> I kind of, kind of made it more difficult. And I was trying to check out samples of writing of all these different, you know, Hindi and Burmese and all these different dialects from India, and none of them matched up. And I went at this for probably six months. So I go to a half price bookstore and I'm buying up movies out of the. I would just buy whatever was in the. Uh, the clearance as is been because they'd be like a dollar and if they sucked or the dvds were scratched didn't work it was like who cares it was only a dollar i'm not really out of anything i pick up the movie ultraviolet i don't notice this it's in the cover of this movie by the way it's the poster art i don't notice it it isn't until the end of the movie the final fight scene there's this big sword fight and i go holy shit that's the sword i bought the writing on the sword that was on the scabbard and also etched in the blade, it's this vampire language from the movie Ultraviolet. But it's not like a full, fleshed out uh, language like Elvish and Lord of the Rings or Klingon in Star Trek. So, long story short, and this has been a very long story, it's gibberish. All this, these cool inscriptions that are on the scabbard and they're actually etched into the blade of the sword and everything, they're nothing. It says literally nothing because it isn't even a real written language. They just came up with a dialect for the few lines in the language that needed to be spoken. And the funny thing is, the sword's really only in that final fight scene. It's used once at the very, very beginning of the movie and on the poster for the movie, the main character's holding it, but it's at such an angle that you don't really realize it's there. So, yeah, that's the one sword I currently own. <laughs> and that's what it is, and it's actually of a really good quality. I've seen other versions of that sword that were not as anywhere near as nice. Um, it's a good, I don't know what type of steel it is, but it, it feels like it is a good carbon steel and not stainless but it's so heavy and it's not balanced right. You couldn't use it for any practical self-defense type of a situation. However, I do have this sitting here. I mentioned both modern and traditional martial arts. I do have a couple of guns in the house. But I also have this tomahawk. This is the tomahawk from Zombie Tools, which is a terrible name for a company zombie tools it sounds like it's not something serious but they actually do a really good quality it's full tang 
it is balanced right there, nice and even. Uh, I used a diamond sharpener on this thing. This is one of the best axes I've ever had. Um, it's funny, when I go camping, I will take this as well as my camp axe because you're not supposed to, have to take firearms into a national park. So this is my self-defense tool. I'll go out there with two axes, one for chopping wood and one for self-defense. Though I'm kind of split half the time I go camping, I half the time I do take a gun with me anyway. Did a bit of uh, did a bit of sword under new jitsu. Oh yeah, because Fayetteville, Fayetteville actually has a there's a really good Tai Chi instructor there, and there used to be a, a decent ninjutsu instructor. I got dragged and hacked some styrofoam heads. That's a good time. Um, we used to use when I was studying the um, Italian fencing, and also with the um, Polish, we would use water bottles because it. It actually works a little bit better than ballistic gel. Believe it or not, a water bottle filled up is about the same density of um, human bone when it's, you know, inside a human body, not later. So that, that's why you see people usually cutting up the, the water bottles. Is that That's the reason. Or milk cartons. Yeah. Yeah, but there was a Tai Chi instructor in Fayetteville who's one of the better ones. I can't remember his name now. And when I was in massage school, one of the instructors there had mentioned that she was taking Tai Chi classes, but she's like, yeah, I'm taking, like, the real, like, the combat Tai Chi. And I says, where at? And she's made a comment, like, David Chin, yes, that's the guy. But she had made a comment, she's like, oh, it's this guy in Fayetteville, you probably don't know him. And I'm like, I live in Fayetteville. And I'm like, there's two guys, one of them's me. And I know who the other guy is. And I'm like, you don't study with me because I only teach my stepkids. I'm like, so, like, who is it? Because there's a couple of Tai Chi schools. But I, I was like, most of them are just Qigong dudes. And, yeah, it was David Chen. And I'm like, oh, you're, you're in good hands with that man. Like, I, I never studied with him. But he was, like, I knew his reputation. He does Tai Chi, Hopgar, and Sancho. Yeah, and Tai Chi and Sancho are very, very similar. A lot of guys who do one will do the other. Yes, David Chin is, again, never studied with him, but by reputation, he's very reputable and a fantastic instructor. Definitely somebody who I would recommend. So when I used to play this game as a kid, because I was just so obsessed with it, and I beat it, and I beat it with 100%, and I would sometimes pick a power, and I would be like, okay, like I can only use the sword this time, or in this run, I can't use any weapons, or I can only use the laser... And uh, I remember one time I glitched the game. I got this, the crash. And I don't remember what I did, but I glitched it to where it, I had permanent usage of this. That was fun. I wish I could remember how to do it. I've looked online. I don't think anybody else has ever been able to do that. Used to own Golden Dragon Restaurant. They'd be in the parking lot working out. Yes, yes, I know all about that. Um... We used to, when I first started, we'd sometimes go out in the parking lot by our school and we're doing some push hands training. And me and uh, one of the other guys, what was his name? Hokey, Jimmy Hokinson. We called him Hokey. He, uh, we were out in the, it was like a Saturday and we decided to go outside. It was just me and him that day. The, the head instructor, Dave, wasn't there and I was like the only one because Hokey was leading the class and I was the only one who showed up. So like we'll do some push hands and some actual sparring, and we go outside, and we're we're doing this, and uh, the police got called, and we're like trying to explain to the police like no 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 this is this is a friend of mine we're good. <laughs> I actually got another story like that going back to the to the navy. I did Okinawa Kenpo, the Budo Eskrimo Ninjutsu. Yeah, Kenpo. My my instructor did Kenpo taught Kenpo as well. Um. And then he, uh, Eskrima, I did study some while I was in, in Japan as well, especially when I was doing fencing, and a lot of times with fencing, they'll use, like, the, almost like the, the sticks. So you, I started stick fighting as well, just because, like, I had the tools, which was some great stuff. So that combined with the Italian fencing really helped me out a lot. Um, so anyway, me and my buddy Lu Luca, who I mention all the time, 
we were we were doing something. We usually go. We spend like most of our nights at the gym. So we're at, we were out there. It was like a Saturday night. We're up late. The gym was closed for like renovations or something that night. So we decided we wanted to do some fencing, and we're like, well, we'll just go out behind the barracks. So we're like, well, we'll since we're going behind the barracks, we'll be safe. We put on like the padded suits and everything, and we're just using like the wooden swords. But we're kind of doing like full contact. We're out there about three minutes because right behind our barracks, we were in barracks twelve twenty six. Right behind that is the MP's office. Three minutes into our sparring match, like five squad cars pull up. MPs are getting out. They're whipping out guns, telling us to you know, put the put our weapons down. And everything hands hands behind our head. We're doing it. We're like, what the hell? And they're looking at us funny and. And they're like, what's going on? They realize right away something's up. And we're like, dude, we were just sparring. Like, having a fencing match because the gym's closed. And they're just cracking up laughing. And, like, they're apologizing to us. Like, we're sorry, guys. Like, we got to report two, two guys were out behind the barracks fighting. And we're laughing. It's like, yeah, two guys behind the barracks, essentially in suits of armor with swords fighting. That's... Tad bit on the medieval side, don't you think? <laughs> but yeah, those MPs had a really good laugh about that one. My karate instructor heart was with a scrima. He was Filipino. Yeah, that that is some good stuff right there. The way everything's kind of improvised with the weapons. Oh, I love that. But again, stick fighting and fencing go pretty much hand in hand. How could I not? I was supposed to jump over that. <laughs> you guys are supposed to help me jump over that. Now, because of my head injury, I've not really been practicing martial arts. I've done some, tried to keep up with my fencing and, of course, with, uh, with firearms training. But I'm not supposed to get hit in the head too much anymore. So, like any, like, sparring or anything. There was a guy found him on Facebook about a year ago who was trying to start like a Viking reenactment group and I met up with him a few times and we talked about it and I was like you want to do like full contact weapon sparring and I'm like yeah that I could do I'm probably not going to get clocked in the head doing that but uh nothing ever really came of that that was kind of sad but it's all good All right, let's try and get this. I remember one of these, I think, I don't remember if they both went all the way or if yeah, they did. I got to I'm just so lazy. I thought about Chen Student School. I'd like to do something, but I'm so lazy. Yeah, and I'm, I'm the same way. I mean, I work not crazy anymore, like 40 hours. But working nights and then just, even just trying to find time to do YouTube stuff has been crazy and something happened with my streaming and I wasn't able to I, I figured it out the other day by pure accident but I, I tried streaming back in July and couldn't get this to work and I was like screw it I don't got time to deal with it I was just playing around with it the other morning and hey I figured out exactly what it was which is nice because now I can do stuff like this again But that, that's my thing, is I just, I want to make stupid YouTube videos and uh, go to work, and that, that's pretty much it. Uh, I, I've been having so many problems with my truck lately and everything, and trying to find different ways to save money. I have AT&T for internet, and AT&T changed their policy years ago that you can't just have unlimited internet, you have to have cable. So I've got the cable hooked up in this room too, and I... For the longest time, I was like, I don't have time to watch TV. Well, I'm paying like $180 now. Not $100. Like $160 a month for ca for cable and internet. I, I now spend uh, about the first hour. Like, I get home from work and I, I watch Boomerang. I watch Tom and Jerry. Like, old Tom and Jerry. For an hour after work. Just because, like, I got to get my money's worth. And that was something I was looking at. I was like... Well, if I got rid of my internet, that saves me almost $200 a month. But then I'm not making YouTube videos, and that's kind of the one thing keeping me going these days. So I kind of got to just grin and bear it. But 
Yeah, I, I had my, my brakes went out of my truck. And I went to the local Firestone, right? And because the Firestone usually treated me good. And they're like, hey, we need to like completely overhaul your brakes. You need new brake pads, new rotors, new calipers. The hoses, the, the air hoses for them are busted, which is what caused the problem initially. They walked me through everything. I was like, well, I got got the Firestone card. I've got a thousand dollar limit on it. It was about a thousand dollars to fix it. I'm like, do it, because I'm thinking he just told me my brakes were bad and they wanted to do this. I'm thinking four sets of brake pads, four calipers, the two air hoses, four rotors, just under a thousand dollars. I've had a done a lot of brake for my old PT Cruiser. Man, the brakes go out all the time. So I'm thinking, oh, about a thousand dollars. It's a little high, but. You know, I, I did half this, the same thing for like just two for like 500 bucks years ago on a smaller vehicle. I'm like, that's not so bad. He used the, the Firestone card. I'm like, I'll pay it off when I can. So, so now my Firestone card's maxed out. Truck drives like a dream for two weeks. And then uh, I start having the same problem. And I go back there, and I have them look it over because I do, like, the free brake inspections. They're like, yeah, so what we do with your front brakes, we've got to do with your backs now. I says, hold up, man. What do you mean what you do with my front brakes? Didn't you do all four of them? And he goes, no, we only do the fronts. I says, you're telling me you, I spent, like, $1,000 just getting the front brakes done? I'm like, that's, that's not right. And he's like, well, what do you want to do? I says, well, I don't want to do anything because I, I can't afford to do anything right now. So I go home, I grab, because I keep all my paperwork for my car stuff, grab the paperwork, and I see everything they did on the front brakes, and I'm like, oh, like, they gave me ceramic brake pads, well, my, my truck's in 03, and it's literally falling apart, to the point of it's probably not even safe for me to be driving it. Uh, I've got other issues that I can't even do anything about, that I, I prefer not to mention. And they put... You know, they put ceramic brakes on, brake pads on. I'm like, man, that, like those are like 80 bucks each. I'm like, dude, that, that could have been cut in half with that price if they had just used, like, the metallic ones. Like, that was stupid. And they gave me, like, their lifetime warranty on them, which was, like, $200. And it's like, again, this truck might not last me six more months. I don't need the $200 lifetime warranty. So it's like, there's, like, $300 right there that could have been saved. They want to do all this extra stuff to the back brakes. So I was like, yeah, I got I got to start shopping around, but I can't do anything for probably another month yet. Dealing with all that, this, this stream is going to help me out with that today. I love the hammer. Give me the hammer. Ah, damn, I got the spark one back. Just adopted a third cat from one of my old friends. It's rough. Tom and Jerry are great. I got hit by a... Tire and Brake Boulevard totaled my truck. That's where I'm at, man. I My situation is so bad, and it's deer hunting season, that I almost want to go drive my truck around out in the country at night on a weekend in hopes that I hit a deer and total the truck because I still owe like $8,000 on it. How you doing on that meat? Oh, we're doing good down, Phoenix. We're... It was at the top of the mug. It's about right here. We're doing good. Take the battle axe to Firestone. The only reason I don't go cause a st stink at Firestone is because they treated me good in the past. But the back, I looked at their invoice. Oh, that was dumb. And they, um, they had a job. They said, you should consider getting this done, but you don't need to. They put that on there. And that was like $400. What it turns out I, I really just need is the the brake pads, the rotors, and the, the calipers. And I'm like, I could get that for 500 or less depending on where I... Honestly, I know how to do the brake pads and the rotors myself. I'm a little on the, on the calipers. And I don't have a garage, and it's that time of year where like, it's cold. I don't want to be sitting out in the cold and... I'd have to work in the street like I did when I did the um, the differential a few months ago. Boy, let me tell you, that is scary when you got your, your truck up on a couple of blocks like that and you're working underneath it and cars are driving by you like 
you know, a foot away from you. That That's some scary shit right there. And I live in a residential, you know, it's supposed to be like 25 miles per hour. That people go 30 or 40. That that was scary. So I was like, yeah, I'm, I'm good with paying the money to have somebody else do this right now. But I ain't paying no thousand dollars for it. So I, I'm... I meant to call a few local places and get some quotes today. That that didn't happen. Some other stuff happened before I had, had to hit the stream. But again, I can't afford it for about another month, so I, I got time. That's the one thing I got is time. Oh, the egg catcher game. I love that. I hate deer. I support hunting. Yeah, I, I every year it's like I want to go hu go hunting, but I need to get myself a decent shotgun and something like with. All the crap with my truck right now happens, and I can't. See, I'm, I'm a fan of I just need a shotgun and some slugs. I don't need a rifle. I don't need to be able to shoot up to half a mile. That's ridiculous. My old Hyundai. I've got pictures up on Facebook of my old Hyundai. That hit. I hit a deer with that. But to say I hit a deer is not appropriate. It's more accurate to say the deer hit me. It legit jumped in front of me. I was only doing about 25 or 30. I was able to drive away from the situation. And then when I went to uh, get have the insurance company look at it, because it wasn't a like expensive car, they wanted to total the vehicle. And at the time, I, I didn't get the gap insurance on that because when I bought the vehicle, I just couldn't afford it. And I was like, hey, I still owe like $4,000. How can we make this work? So they were able to work with me and get things done. And and I was able to get the, the car fixed. But oh, it drove wonky, which is part of why I bought this truck. It was, it was a good deal on the truck, but here I am two years later, and everything's just falling apart on it. And it's like, I, I almost need to hope for an accident, but I don't want to hit another car and endanger somebody else. I'd rather... Hit a patch of ice and slam into a wall or, or hitting a deer. Something where I'm the only one at risk is about the only way I'm going to get away with this. Because my, my my rates were so high on the um, the interest that my total ended up being like $10,000 and I would rolled like half of my old auto loan into this one. So after two years, I'm just now starting to pay it down. Still owe like $8,000. I don't think the thing's going to last me another six months. <laughs> oh, <coughs> excuse me. Oh, I just sneezed. We'll take it a drink. That was disgusting. <laughs> the meat was good, but oh man, I like sneezed over the top of the. I'm glad that wasn't a boogery sneeze. And I'd be mad if I got like boogers into that mead, man. That was not cheap. Spent some money on that. Deer hit me a month after I got my new car. Oh, that sucks. Now, it's funny. I, I hit a deer at like 30 miles per hour. The car didn't even look like it had any real damage to it. And they wanted to total my vehicle. My sister hits one going like something like 50 or 60. Her car was all smashed up. And the insurance, her insurance is like, yeah, we got this. Don't worry about it. <laughs> it's just how it is. This is one of those boss battles that as a kid gave me so much trouble. And I might lose this first round here. But as an adult, I love this. The sun and the moon and how they switch back. This is like one of my favorite boss fights in any video game. I love it. And you can just stand here and... Usually you can just stand there and suck it up. and Ugh, there we go. Almost got this. Back when I was doing the Cardinal Nemo Ignatius thing, I had a clip of this fight that I had taken from when I played through the game years ago. In my uh, the ending of my intro with the sun and the moon actually like crashing into each other. Oh no! Oh there it goes! Oh oh oh! I am. I was surprised I made it that far. Yeah. Um. So he says an organ is legal to eat the road till you just have to report it. So the night I hit this deer, I didn't have my cell phone. I forgot my cell phone at home. So, and this is when I was working second shift. Because, uh, well, I didn't have a vehicle when they asked me to change the third shift. 
But anyway, so I'm working second shift. Um, I had come home. I was going home. It was really foggy, and the way I had to go home at the time, I had to go through this back road, and it was like November. And and I knew I knew what it was. And on my way home, I stopped to get gas, and I saw like four or five deer crossing the road down the highway I had to take. And it was one of those. I better go slow because there's deer. So I stop and get gas, and I'm driving. Like I said, usually I'd floor it. 45, 50 down this highway, but I was like, nope, doing about 35. This guy's pulling up behind me. He's swerving around. He's going way too fast. He's clearly drunk. I see him in my rearview mirror, and I'm like, I'm going to keep going slow. He's about on my bumper, and all of a sudden, this deer comes out of nowhere, and bam, I hit this deer. The deer, the deer like, ragdolled, too. It was so, because he hits the fender of my car, the driver's side fender, but he, but she flies in front of me and flips over. I mean, it was... It would have been hilarious if it wasn't so damn scary. Dude in the car behind me, he goes flying by. Well, there's a house right by where I hit, and I don't have a phone, and it's like 1 o'clock in the morning. Funny thing, if I hadn't stopped to get gas, I never would have hit that deer. But anyway, so I go up to this house because there's lights on. I can see people moving around. I'm knocking on the windows. They come and look out the windows. I wave at them, point to my car. I got my hazard beams on. They look at me and just walk away. And it's like, I get it. You're in a house in the middle of nowhere. It's one in the morning, but you could clearly see what was going on. So I'm like, well, what do I do now? Wait around about five minutes, and I see this car coming down the road. And I'm like, dude, I don't got a choice. So I'm out in the middle of the road at like almost two in the morning at this point, trying to wave this guy down. And he stops. And I was like, yeah, man, I hate the steer. I'm like, one, I don't know what to do. And two, I don't have a phone. So he calls the sheriff's department for me. We're waiting. This car comes flying down the road towards us, pulls over. This guy gets out, and he just reeks of alcohol. And he's like, yeah, man, I was the car behind you. And, uh, and I was on my way to the bar to get a drink. And it's like, smells like you're on your way home from the bar to get a drink. But we try. I tried to keep him there because I was like, first of all, he's drunk off his ass, and explain it, it really did explain how he was driving. But he he ended up taking off before the sheriff's deputy got there. So the sheriff's deputy gets there, and he asks if I want to keep the deer, and I says no, I don't want to keep it because they'll ask you like, if you want to keep it, you can you can take it and have it processed. The guy that stopped to help me was goes, you mind if I take it? I said, man, you stopped and helped me out. You're like, you're a license. Because, like, the sheriff's deputy would have come by that way eventually, but probably not for another two to three hours. So I was like, yo, man, the deer's yours. And he says, well, look, I got a, uh, he's like, I'm going to call a friend to bring some blankets so I can throw this in the back of my SUV. He's like, you mind waiting around and helping me out? I says, no. I was like, I don't even know if my car's going to run. I was like, then I'll just, because he was going back to the town I lived in. I said, I'll just follow you back to town if that's cool with you in case something else happens. So he was cool with that. So he got a free deer out of it. He took the he took the deer and had that process for himself. I, th I think that's a pretty good payment for a good deed. Stop and let somebody use your phone. Uh, this is getting so good. Uh, both times I hit a deer, I was able to keep driving. Yeah, I drove away. Like I said, like you can look at. Yeah, I mean, you've seen the pictures, James, on my Facebook. I know you've seen those pictures. The car doesn't look like it has that much damage. Well, then it turns out, like, whereas the the, cause, the outside of the car didn't look that bad, the inside was just wrecked. Uh, it turns out I was leaking uh, antifreeze, didn't even realize. I had to drive it from West Bend, Wisconsin, down to Greendale, Wisconsin. It's a good hour and a half drive about to have the insurance company look at it. And as soon as the insurance adjuster went outside, he's like, dude, you're leaking antifreeze, I can smell it. He's like... He's like, you live in West Bend? Because you shouldn't have driven here. You shouldn't have even been driving like five minutes from your house, let alone down here. But it was at some body shop, and, and they said they would they would do it. But they were having a lot of a lot of deer hits, like more than normal that year. So they told me like we can we can do the repairs, but you're looking at one to two months before we can even get to it. I'm like, that's that's fine. I'll figure something out. I was getting a ride from work from somebody else, and I get called in the office one day, and they're like, hey, you want to take this third shift position? We'll even give you a raise if you do. 
I says, I'd love to, but I'm on a vehicle right now. So they're like, we will change your job. We'll give you the raise, but you can keep working second shift until you get your vehicle back. But I couldn't work my, like, my second shift job that I had. I was, like, told that I couldn't do any of this stuff for that job at all anymore. So I was basically back to being, like, a paint line assistant, but making way more money than they make. So that, that was all right. I had a deal the night I bought a Nintendo Wii. This was back in February of 07. Oh, damn. Yeah, it's no joke, man. And that's why I was like, you know, I, I understand where, like, vegans are coming from, being, like, an animal lover myself and everything, but, you know, we got to keep those those populations in check. I uh, helped this lady, haven't, didn't do it last year, but we'd helped her, like, butcher chickens and turkeys. She'd buy a bunch, and she'd let us give her money for, like, our own chicken or turkey, and we just had to go help her butcher them, and then we got to take our ours with us. And I wanted to learn to do that. And it's like, it's not a pleasant thing to do, but it's like, I felt like it was something I needed to know how to do. Plus, I'm always talking about how I want to go, like, like, and, and Bob knows this, go off and basically be like a hermit. So, I was like, I got to know how to do this. So, I told my niece I was going to take her camping sometime, like, bushcraft style camping, like I like to do. And we were talking about getting some, like, chickens and maybe some pheasants and stuff and raising them. And I says, yeah, if we do that, we'll we'll grab one of those pheasants to take with us for dinner one night. I was like, we'll probably kill it before we go off. I was like, I'll teach you how to do that. And she kind of gave me this weird look. I said, look, I'm like, it's not a pleasant thing. I realize this. It's like, I, I don't, like, I, I feel bad for the animal, but at the same time, like, that's what it's for in this case. So I told her, like, I will butcher the animal myself, but I'm going to make you cook it. Um, and I was like, I'm gonna, I'll show you how to do everything, but it's like, I, I'll take care of the nasty. Because the last time I did it, I was like, I don't want to slaughter the birds themselves. And it was, it was weird, like, I would go and get the turkeys. I got no problem going and catching them and bringing them back, but I didn't want to be the guy to kill them. Because <laughs> it's just, it's, it's weird like that. Like, it's got, like, learning to do that, I think everybody should do, because... It really does give you a different perspective of it, and it's, it's like, I, I respect the food processing community so much more after doing that. Uh, there's a butcher shop across the street from my house. Fantastic butcher shop. That That's something else I learned, was that, I mean, it does really rely on the animal, but it's like, man, that, those butchers are an art, because I got this one across the street from me, and then there's another one uh, on the other side of town that I like. And their meat is just so much better than if I just go to, you know, the local grocery store and pick it up. And it's like, man, I, I never realized how that, that's like an art form. I, I don't know how, what they're doing differently, but they're doing something. And the one that's on the other side of town that I like, it turns out the guy by my house got his start there like 30 some years ago. That's where he started. And then he opened up his own over here. Uh, bratwurst-wise, oh, man, again, the, the, the best bratwurst. The, the one on the other side of town is Meesfield. I did a video for, like, a like a commercial for them about a year ago. It was just something I did as a joke. And a guy across the street from me, he got his start, start over there. And it shows because his brats are just as good. His hot dogs are unbelievable. Like, I'll go buy those and just eat them raw sometimes. And they're, they're, like, the best hot dogs for camping, let me tell you. Make sure to hit the thumbs up, everybody. It helps the stream get viewed. That is true. That is true. I do not. I, I don't self-promote enough like that. Fortunately, Bob's here to take care of that for me. I am going to take a potty break, which I have a feeling there will be lots of in this stream. And then we are going to get back to it. Hopefully, you don't hear too much. Yep. I feel the alcohol.
So my laptop is like kind of kitty corner here, and then the TV is straight in front of me. But the laptop's kind of in front of the door. I got up and went to the bathroom. That was all good. You're aware of this. And uh, <laughs> we heard it. Awesome. And you know it's a good stream. Mega Dan does that all the time, too. It's a good stream if you can hear somebody pee. But on my way back, the alcohol kind of hit me. I had KFC right before I got on streaming, too. And uh, it's not the Sega Genesis controller, but I don't know which of these NES controllers it is. This is not good. I think it, it's the generic one. That's this one. Okay. <laughs> There's two of them sitting here, and no, this is like one of my original from 1989, and this is a generic one I bought over at Freak Toys. And you can see on the back. I've pissed numerous times during excess. <laughs> I need to get caught up, man. I've not listened to an excess gaming in like two months because I got so many other podcasts I listen to now. You guys were the first, so you guys got me hooked. You and Xander got me hooked on podcasts, and I love you both so much for it. <laughs> oh, I was saying something about getting up in the elk. I don't remember. Like, already buzzed, guys. We're only halfway through Kirby, and I'm already buzzed. That's that's fantastic. I've actually been hitting that up a lot more than I thought of, because that's really good. Let me let me tell you. So there's Blackberry and White Winter's uh, White Winter's Blueberry combined. I, I kind of want to throw a raspberry. It'd be like black raspberry and blueberry all at once. But I, I wonder if that might be a little too sweet. There ain't no such thing. But uh, I do got to watch prices. And the, the Solu was like $12 and the White Winter was like 16 So I was like, ah, a bottle of each is good. Thanks, Justin. <laughs> Trying to get back on schedule lately, yeah. I, I well, excess gaming is is. I've listened to a lot of gaming podcasts, and you guys are li like. I'm not just saying that because you're friends of mine. You guys are legit the best gaming podcast. The other one I like is um, it's one out of England. Can't think of the name now. Ah, the throw guy. Yeah, there's one out of England that I, I really like, and I've tried listening to a few others that just they didn't they didn't really do it for me. But but Excess Gaming, if you've not listened to Excess Gaming podcast, uh, it's on most of your podcatchers. I've been using Himalaya lately. It's on Himalaya, but if you just go to Excess Gaming on YouTube, you can hear them on there. They are like the best gaming podcast. They do the retro. They do the new stuff. Uh, James Grusin, of course, and Xander Scullion. Easily the best. Could not recommend them enough. My podcast heroes were, were Sega addicts, but they no longer exist. That was totally worth dying to read your comment, sir. I, I will stand to that, by that, to the grave. Oh, man, I can't even speak right. Like... <laughs> I'm not, I'm not even that plastered. This is, all right. See, I thought about doing some Adventures of Lolo, and then um, Sean Vincent was doing some Kirby Superstar the other day. I was like, oh, Kirby's the perfect game because it's more lighthearted and just kind of goofy and fun. But uh, Lolo, it's made by HAL Laboratories too, and even in the first Kirby game, Lolo and Lala appeared as villains. They were a boss fight. So it kind of worked in, but I was like, if I get plastered, I can't play something like a brain game like Lolo. I can't do it. All right. I never had mead. Is it more like wine or a spirit? It's a wine, but it's made from honey as opposed to citrus. Uh, they say the term honeymoon actually comes from mead because you would give a newborn couple a moon's worth of, of mead. Or honey when they would get married the Lola games are great it is a shame we didn't get more yeah and because I've got this Famicom converter cart let's grab that real quick oh 
Oh yeah, I should not be standing up. <laughs> so I've got this thing, it plugs into my, my top loader, and then I can throw... I can throw a Famicom card onto it and play them. The funny thing is, it sits in, like this is the front, and the cards plug in backwards. And I thought maybe it was just a weird aesthetic thing because it can go either way. But if you plug them in this way, they don't work. So they legit plug in backwards, which is a little weird. But no, this thing is great. I bought a honeybee, and the honeybee didn't work. And I picked this up off of Amazon, and it worked just fine. Um, but they have the Agerland games on Famicom. I, I need to pick some of those up. I would love to play more of those. Sold my top loader. Yeah, I had, I bought a top loader. I was in the military when I got the top loader. I was in, in Seattle, in, in Bremerton. And um, I wanted one because my old, um, my old, toaster unit I could get it to work but I'd have to like pry the pins up and stuff every so often and I decided it was time to get a top loader this must have been oh five oh six it would have been oh six because I was living off base when I decided to do this I didn't actually get it to like oh seven because they all were selling for like a hundred dollars and I was like Dude, when that unit came out, it was 50 bucks. I remember those commercials with, like, the kid getting the $50 check from his grandmother, and it's like, go buy yourself a Nintendo. And uh, I was like, I'm not paying more for a used one than what it was when it was new. And I watched eBay for about a year. And uh, found one for 50 bucks and picked it up. And then I, I had kept my original top loader until I was in Fayetteville. It was one of the guys at um, one of the flea markets. I sold him my top loader. And at that point, I had like seven Mario Duck Hunt carts. Because people would find out I'm into retro games and be like, oh, I've got games for you. And it would always just be the Mario Duck Hunt cart. And he, he wanted a bunch of those because he had systems. And he wanted those to sell with the systems, like when they were new. So I sold him my, my original NES that I got for Christmas at 87 and like six of my Mario Duck Hunt carts. And he, he gave me a, like I traded those for a shit ton of games. And it's funny because the Mario Duck Hunt carts go for like 20, 30 bucks now. And I'm like, that's, that's the same. Like it's, it's literally the most common card out there. It should not cost more than $5. And I just saw some conversations pop up. I need to get through this corridor and then check that out. Um, yeah, my top loader was not the best, but got it for 50 years ago. Joe Rogan podcast is great. It, yeah, that is a good one. I don't care about many of the guests. I definitely check out the ones that interest me the most. I only had over 30 Mario Duck Hunts. When I got my, my 7800, which I need a new AC adapter for... And I'm at the point where I almost need to just buy a new system because it's easier to find a new system than just the AC adapter. But it came with four games, and two of them were Pole Position 2 and Xevious. And I was like, you know, there's only like 70 games for the 7800. I can get a full library for no problem. Like the two expensive games are Midnight Mutants and um, Ninja Golf. And I have both of those. My Ninja Golf is actually complete. I paid like 50 bucks for that, I think. But every time I, I would just go on eBay and buy lots, and I'd get like seven, five or six games. But every lot always had a copy of Pole Position 2 and Xevious. And I've got so many at this point that my joke is that I'm going to make myself an end table out of those carts. And the Pole Position carts will be the legs because it's Pole Position, and then the top will be all the Xevious carts. But actually the game I have the most of is uh, Atari 2600 Missile Command. You would not believe how many like people are constantly giving me copies of Missile Command. And uh, one dude I used to work with, his his like girlfriend was cleaning out her grandparents' stuff or something, and she he had, she had a bunch of Atari games, so she gave gave them to him, and he took all the ones he wanted, and then he gave me the rest. And in there was probably seven copies of Missile Command just within that. And then I'd get them in different lots and stuff. So it's, it, that's really become a joke. It's been like, how many copies of Missile Command can I get? 
And the thing is, there were various, like, releases of Missile Command, like, different... Some have, like, the actual artwork, some just say Missile Command on them. It's, it's so ridiculous, and I've got, like, every variant of that. If I had a bunch of money and got into collecting, I would corner the market on Mario Duck Hunts. There are millions. Good luck, there are millions. My NES came from my homie Rob Luther, so I will always keep it. And and you've got you've got that Messiah Generation Next, I believe that I I'm pretty sure was my old system because I think you said the NES cart slot didn't work, but the um the Famicom cart slot worked, and that's how mine was. And I had left that at my ex-wife's place. So I'm, I'm almost certain she probably sold that to a pawn shop and you actually got, got my old Nex system, which is fine. <laughs> I, I am not at all. That's I had that, and then I, I upgraded to my top loader and with the Famicom card. But I used to have a, a Famicom disc system. That was nice because I would keep that plugged into the Messiah Nex. I wonder if anyone owns as many of one game as that guy that had a fridge of... SNES Jurassic Park. I am going to have to look that up. I am not drunk enough to forget that. You remember how there was a dude who... It was like a website... Devoted to finding and destroying every copy of Shaq Fu. I saw this show on Hulu the other... Uh, like about a week ago. It came on after one of my other shows. Um, celebrity Chef Eddie Wong. It's based on his book. Straight Off the Boat. There's an episode about him wanting to get Shaq Fu. And he ends up not getting it, but all of his friends get it. And they're just like, yeah, you know, the animation was good. And the instruction manual is thorough. And he's just kind of like, game sucks, doesn't it? Like, like yeah, it, it sucks is maybe a little too strong, but it's not good. <laughs> and it's, just, it's like, yep, that was, that was every kid back then. I remember almost everybody I knew who had a Genesis or Super Nintendo, they had to go out and get Shaq Fu and then... That was the reaction. Like, it was such a... It's got its... Po like, for every positive, there was a negative. You, you couldn't complain too much. Oh, I did that wrong. Oh, well. So, I should tell my story of my, my retro systems here. I never got rid of my, my Nintendo. Super Nintendo came out, you know, and it was like that episode of the Angry Video Game. They were like, hey, can I have a Super Nintendo? Well, you got a Nintendo. But this one's 16-bit. What does that mean? I don't know. <laughs> so I never got Super Nintendo or any anything like N64, any of that. Well, I just had the Nintendo. And uh, my AC adapter quit around 95. It got a short in it, and it shorted out. And then my parents had said, like, I could get a system for Christmas. And I was, like, obsessed with the idea of handhelds. So I asked for a Game Gear, and I got a Game Gear. So the Game Gear being basically the same thing as the Master System, that's where my love of the Master System comes from. That was me. Because, you know, that was when I was, like, 95, 96. That was really when, you know, starting. Because 95, I would have been 12. Going into 96. It's my teenage years. You really remember that time period. It's when things really developed. So that's where most of my memories are. Playing playing the, the Game Gear. So when I got my Master System, which was oddly enough a gift from my ex-wife. That was my one year wedding anniversary present. was a, a Master System. And it came with Secret Commando and Great Football. Both okay games, to be honest. Uh, Great Football has actually a really cool soundtrack to it. So, but I, I still always had my Nintendo. We never sold it, never traded the games off. And then it was when I was in the military and I figured out what I needed to do to, to really fix it up. To make it run good. Get, get a new uh, AC adapter. I, I, got a new, I got a new AC adapter when I was in Wisconsin. Like in high school. Like late high school. And um, it was about my senior year of high school... To my freshman year of college, I had gotten a bunch of games. Like GameStop had started selling them again. And I had got a new AC adapter. And I was on this RPG kick. And that was the summer I played. Like, Crystallis was the big one. I freaking love Crystallis. That was probably the biggest one. But I'd also picked up, like, Ultima Exodus, Dragon Warrior, um, 
Ghost Lion was actually one that I picked up and I sold. Should never sold that. It game goes for so much now. Um, Dragon Warrior was the game. This is good. I was playing Dragon Warrior. It was December of 2002. Scum was left for the military when my my second AC adapter quit on me. Or not the AC adapter, the, the pins. The pins and the, uh, the connector pins had finally kind of given out. I was fighting the Dragon Lord in Dragon Warrior when that crapped out on me and that was it. Uh, I tried my cartridge with my save file a few years ago and the save file had still worked. It probably still works to this day. But it's one of those like I would have to grind to get enough points to, to fight the dragon. Like I, I need to go back and do it but it's just felt so slow playing it now. I don't think I ever will. So I was a guy who never got rid of his system and then when I got in the military and I found what I needed to do to fix them and all that started doing that and it was when I was in I think it was when I was in Bremerton it was like right after I got there I figured out what I needed to do and I had asked my mother to send me my system and my old games to see if I could fix them and I did that and I just remember people making fun of me I would go hook them up to the big screen TV we had in the common area of the barracks and like be like playing like Ultima Exodus or or Tetris or something and people would be like why are you playing these stupid old games this is dumb they look like shit and all this and then, you know, like 2006 or seven, when the Angry Video Game Nerds first started posting his videos on YouTube, and he got big real fast. And suddenly, I'm the man. Like, like this guy has all these games, too. He's awesome. And it was kind of funny, because I've got, on the NES, maybe 200 games, which up till about 2008 was really, really impressive to people. And then 2008, after after uh, James Rolfe got popular and, and made retro gaming like a big thing, it's nothing. Like 200 games, it's, it's a tiny collection. <laughs> so I always joke with people, like, you know, and they say, like, yeah, I sold off my collection and now I'm back into it and trying to rebuy them. And it's like, yeah, you're in my playground. Be happy I'll let you be here. I'm kidding, of course. I think the more people into it, the better. Uh, I am definitely an advocate for emulation, though. By all means, emulate the crap out of this shit. For one, the prices won't go down. I always told people, like, if I hadn't had all these games already, I would emulate. Like, in a heart, like, if I was just getting into it, no question, I would get myself a Raspberry Pi. I do, I do actually emulate. I got it right here. I had this emulator. I picked this up online. It's called an Odroid. Um, it's just got this little... 16, yeah, 16 gigabyte SD card. Looks like an old school Game Boy. I don't know if you'll be able to see this, but I have Nintendo. Um, I got to back out of there. Nintendo, Game Boy, Game Boy Color, Master System, uh, Game Gear, and ColecoVision on there. And they're not even full libraries, because it's like, I wanted to play Super Columns on the Game Gear. Super Columns isn't on here, but... That's what I'll do a lot for Game Raid. When I'm doing a Game Raid episode, I'll... Because I'll, I'll have downtime at work, I'll play it, the Master System game on that at work to get good at it. And then I'll come home, put it, put the game into my Master System, and then try and play it on the Master System. Because otherwise I wouldn't have enough time. So even, even like that, I, I do emulate. But if I hadn't saved all my games since childhood, if I would gotten rid of them at any one point, I would absolutely just get a Raspberry Pi. But but at this point, it's like I've already got hundreds of games. I might as well do it that way. But even then, there's stuff I wouldn't buy. I, I've never had a desire to own a NWC cart. It's Mario Brothers, Tetris, and Rad Racer. I just like the histor the history buff in me likes that, but I don't need to own one. Or um, you know, Flintstones surprise at Dinosaur Peak. I got the first Flintstones game. That's a fantastic platformer. I enjoy it. It's made by my favorite company, Taito. I'm good. Now for the Master System, that is one where I want to get all the European and uh, American games. I spent a lot of time buying up more of the European games. When you get into like the Brazilian games, it just gets 
too much, and those are expensive. And I always joked, like, you know, uh, Land of, not Land, Legend of Illusion and the Smurfs 2 are the big expensive games. And those each go for, like, $600 or more. And I always said, like, those will be my two exceptions to my $100 or less rule. And uh, I got to have, like, all the other games before I pick those two up. Because I, I could justify them. Like, I have every game for these systems released in the U.S. and Europe but these two. Legend of Illusion didn't come out in Europe, though. It only came out in, uh, in, in Brazil. But but I wanted it because there were the two other. But then I got it last last Halloween, oddly enough, for under $100. So that took care of that one. So it's just the, the Smurfs 2 now is the only one left. And I, I actually saw that really cheap. I saw it for like 300 bucks a few years ago. I think that was like right after I bought my truck. <laughs> and that was the only reason I didn't go ahead and buy it. So I need to get caught up on the chat because I have been rambling about nonsense. Because that is what a live stream is. You watch me play games and you hear me ramble about them. Uh, boy, whoo! Oh, your client spit up, dad buys the system. James, you are right. I knew this guy. His name is Adam. And uh, he had every system you could think of because his parents were divorced. And in the 90s, nobody really got divorced. And yeah, he, he's the one guy who had a virtual boy. And he would always joke like, virtual boy is the best system ever. And I'd say, why? And he'd go, because I'm the only one who had it. <laughs> uh, he's also an interest me, me to Harvest Moon. So, that's cool. Uh, Master's Rules. Castellas is so good trying to get Xander on here. I think he's at work. Zelda was where my interest in RPG started, but playing Drake and more before then and thought that was all right. Final Fantasy is what got me to love JRPGs. Yeah, I, I love the first Final Fantasy, and it's about the only one I've really played. I love the Red Mage. That was always my character. I always have a Red Mage named after myself. Andy looked like D from Vampire Hunter D, but Yoshitaka Amano did the, the artwork for those. James, you're wrong about NES Willow or the... FYI, oh, dude, Willow was awesome. That was another one I got that summer. Final Fantasy was my first RPG. I got it because I was sick of hearing about it in Nintendo Power. <laughs> and yes, Willow is okay, just not worth four other games. Yeah, Willow is one of those games, if you can get it on the cheap, and, and right now, where are the prices that if you can find it in, like, your local store, you could probably get it for, like, 10, 20 bucks, which isn't bad. But online, it seems to go for a lot, which I, I don't understand. Uh, Nintendo Power did cover a lot. They dedicated strategy guide for subscribers. Only $40 brand new, worth every cent. Xander is heading to work. Yeah, work at a pachinko place. So, for those of you that don't know, um, I've got a great story about James Gruesome. Uh, we met back when I was living in North Carolina. And I was doing massage work. Uh, we had a mutual friend. And I... Uh, we did a massage party, me and one of the, the girls in my class, we both lived in Fayetteville. And we needed to do like 20, 20 chair massages or something for our, our chair massage class. And we're like, we'll never get this. Well, we knew this lady who would always throw, like almost every weekend she'd throw a party. And they had a swimming pool. So she'd always throw a pool party. So I was like, hey, could you throw us like a pool party and me and my friend will come and we'll do like chair, chair massages and we can... Knock the shit out for school. And she's like, hell yeah. So we did that. And uh, James's wife was one of the ladies who showed up for that. And then James had shown up. And I probably spent a good hour talking to James. I was like, this is like the coolest guy ever. Didn't think of it. Had moved back to Wisconsin. I uh, had come across Xander on a mutual Facebook group. And he told me about his podcast. With him and James. And, uh... I joined their, their group on Facebook, and then I, you know, was about to go back to North Carolina and pick up the, some, like, what it was, it was, I had a lot of stuff at the house, and it was, I had my dad's Ford Escape, and it was one of those, whatever I could fit into the Escape, I could take, and that's it. Well, I had a Bubble Bobble arcade machine, so I says, hey, I know there's a lot of you guys in North Carolina, I've got this Bubble Bobble arcade machine, um, I don't want my ex-wife to sell it and make a bunch of money off of it because I paid some good money for that back. I bought that when I was out in Bremerton. Guy brought it over from Seattle for me. 
So I was like, you know, I don't want her to just sell it and make money off of it. And I want to make sure it goes to a good home. I was like, if anybody wants it, it's free. You just got to show up at the house this day and I haul it away and it's yours. I'll help you load it up, but after that, it's, it's yours. So James contacts me. He's like, yeah, my wife said I could go, go ahead and buy it off of you. And I says, you don't got to buy it, man. You just come show up and take it. And he's like, well, I got to give you something for it. He goes, would you take 60 bucks for it? Well, I was willing to give the thing away. Of course, I'm going to take 60 bucks. So I get him the address, tell him I'm going to be there. He shows up at the house. I've been listening to the, every episode of the podcast, like, as soon as they dropped at this point. Been talking to both Xander and James on Facebook. He shows up, and I just kind of looked at him like, holy shit, like, this is that guy from the massage party, like, a year ago that I talked to for, like, an hour. Never realized it was him till he showed up at the house that day to pick up the arcade machine. <laughs> And I was like, yeah, no, this thing's going to a good home. It, it's good. So I helped him load that up into his truck, and he took that home. And he's, he's given it a worthy home ever since. And I've got I've got Bubble Bobble on my Genesis, or not my Genesis, but on my, my Master System and my uh, my NES. And, and of course, of course, I've got it right there, right here. So, you know, we're, we're good. We're good. I got my fill. I, at one point in time, owned a Bubble Bobble arcade machine. I'm good. I owned it. I, I lived the dream. The arcade games actually become really hard to find. Uh, there's a local guy in Wisconsin who does arcade machine collections. He uh, had uh, an exhibit at the Sheboygan County Museum last year about arcade machines, and we were talking about it, and I mentioned told him the story about my bubble bobble machine and he's like you should never got rid of that man that thing's like worth some money and i was like Nick, you know what it went to a good home it gets played it's all i care about you know i had it at one point it's cool because he, he was telling me that that's one that he really wants and can't get a hold of all right let's get caught up in the chat i traded four games for willow on my first trade Bubble Wobble would be a great one-up arcade cap. It would. It's still here. Many have played it in the garage. I don't remember because I did. Did I give you like some of my sk the, the skateboards I built as well? Because I think you were joking about that on the podcast one time. You have arcade games and like skateboards and uh, um, like the skateboard ramps in your garage, and you were basically cre recreating the uh. The Ninja Turtles, the Foot Clan hideout in your garage, in part thanks to me. You need to get a NARC cabinet, though. Gotta have NARC if you're gonna do the Foot Clan hideout. Oh, man, that first Ninja Turtles movie was all my... It, that was amazing. So this story's come off uh, recently. The old Turtle Den, which if you are a Ninja Turtles fan, and you're on YouTube, and you're on YouTube because you're watching this, the old Turtle Den is a fantastic channel. But he's been posting a lot of uh, pictures of like the Ninja Turtles 3 costumes. And, and how, because those are really the only ones that are still around. Because that foam, that latex rubber, foam rubber, it, it decays really weird. Uh, he's, he posted a couple pictures of the costume for that. And, uh, so they're all from the third one. But he didn't have a Raphael. And I was like, hey, I have a great story about Raphael. So the friend that did the massage party where me and James meet, met, her brother was a special effects guy. And uh, he had worked on Ninja Turtles 3. So when he passed away, she inherited like all of his, his props and stuff he had. So she's got the Raphael's head from TMNT 3. As of 2012, she had it sitting in her her house. So I've actually seen the, the head from the movie. And uh, those costumes actually looked really good in person. They looked just as good as the ones from the first two movies. But what it is, is I think the... Um, you got to remember, they have those really bright studio lights. And it was a different company. It wasn't Jim Henson. So they probably, like, you know, people think about how, like, the spots on the bodies looked more pronounced. They didn't look that bad uh, in, when I saw the head in person. So I think they must have just used, like, a different colored uh, foam latex. 
and that's why they probably look so bad. Oh, I said, I didn't think TMNT 3 was as bad as people say it is, but uh, it's a special effects driven movie, and the costumes do not look good. But in person, that Raphael had looked really good, and then seeing what's left of some of the costumes online from the old Turtle Den, it's like, yeah, they, they, they actually made decent looking costumes for that, they just didn't look good on camera. Lots of Halloween junk and two real coffins in the garage. My best friend's mom has a turtle head from TMNT3. That, that's the one I'm talking about, James, the, the Raphael head. I'm glad she still has it. I think because she had that, and then she had those fetuses from Alien Resurrection. She had a couple of the alien hybrid fetuses. But the best thing she got from her, her um, the best thing she got from that, uh, her brother was, uh, the, the Lamont configuration from uh, Hellraiser. And I remember seeing that and I was like, dude, which Hellraiser did he work on? And she told me he didn't work on any of them. He was just a big fan and wanted one of the boxes and he didn't like the ones that were like, you could buy. So he made himself one. <laughs> That's hardcore. I always was disappointed with this lion because I'd kill him and like suck him up and try to steal his power, and then it was just the fireball power. Like that's just that's just it's, you know you expect something more than something you can get from any old enemy in this. Uncle Gene, rip, yes, yes, because isn't Gene um the younger one the the twin? He's named after him if I recall. Yeah, I never met the guy, but. Just seeing all the props he made and everything. He was the man. And for those of you that don't know, James's wife is like the best tattoo artist in the state of North Carolina. She is phenomenal. She didn't do mine. I got mine done out in, in, in Washington. But if I, if I had the money to do more when I was out there, I probably would have had them done by her. I thought we didn't meet prior, but maybe we did. I, I think we did, but I think it was, it was, it wasn't long. I think you could like showed up to like pick up your wife or something. And we talked for a minute and it might've been, like I said, it was an hour. It might've been less, but I think, I think we talked for a little bit and then that was it. Cause I remember when you walked to my house, you got out of the truck. I was like, I know this guy, like not just from online. Yes, smoking gun tattoos. Also, you know, smoking gun tattoos is good. Because I was on the police department in Fayetteville. And that was like the not shady tattoo parlor in town. And now it's time for another potty break. Because I have drank way too much. This will likely increase the frequency of potty breaks, but it'll make you less drunk. <laughs> Smoking gun. Yes, I definitely do know Joni. Uh, Smoking guns has an almost all-female staff now, my friend. The help pick up the bubble bobble asked about you the other day. Well, I'm doing good. I mean, I'm not, but I am. I'm alive. <laughs> Wish my truck was doing better, but other than that, man, I got mead and I got Kirby and I've got people watching me drink mead and play Kirby on YouTube. 
You know, I was supposed to be telling stories about my boy Patrick, and it ain't happening. <laughs> I'm telling more stories about James and, and life in Fayetteville. So I might as well. I told some guys that worked this story today, since it was uh, up on the. Since I mentioned having been on the police department in Fayetteville. Um, what was that town? It was a suburb of Fayetteville. Um. Sil Silver Silverdale or something? I don't remember. Started with an S. It's where the nice GameStop was. <laughs> Believe it or not, people, there were nice. There are some nice GameStops, and this was one of them. When I was in the police department, they had uh, their police chief in this this suburb of Fayetteville had uh, got arrested for for corruption. He was like being bribed or something. As were like the like four people below him. We having a good time. Oh no, Spring Lake. Spring Lake is the one. Yeah, it was the police chief of Spring Lake, I think. Got busted for taking bribes and they found it like the next like four or five people below him were in on it as well. And so they like completely dismantled the police department because they didn't know how far down this went. And uh so we were all like, you know, the shit's going to hit the fan. This, this entire city basically doesn't have a police department. And they'd asked Fayetteville, they're like, could could you guys send cops over? And we were so understaffed, it was like, no, we, we can't spare we can't spare anybody. We got guys working double and sometimes even triple shifts, and you want us to spare people. And uh, so we figured, you know, well, there's no cops. This town's basically going to become like the Wild West. Their crime rate dropped because all the shop owners in that town started packing heat. They had like the shotguns behind the counter with them, and so nobody was going in there and robbing the place or anything. So it ended up working out to their advantage in a way. This this is one of the hardest bosses just because of the auto scrolling. You know how much I hate auto scrolling. I mentioned it in all three of those Mickey Mouse videos last year. Here we're doing it again. I should put the Mickey Mouse ears on. Oh, killed myself. That's where I am now. Spring Lake, hard night. Yeah, Spring Lake was actually really nice. Yeah, oh, even like, you know, last time I was there was would have been 2013. It was like summer of 2013 when I gave you the bubble bobble machine. And just, I knew there was construction going on when I left in 2012. And just seeing the stuff they did and that... I, I couldn't find my... I had to use my GPS. I couldn't find my way around because they had like, done that much road construction and stuff. But yeah, the... The the, uh, the GameStop in Spring Lake was on point. And then the guy that was managing that, they put him at that one that used to be the Hollywood video for a while. But then I think they brought him back to the Spring Lake one. But that dude, I think his name was Eric. He, he knew what he was doing. He was cool. That was a nice GameStop, unlike the one where I'm at now. But we got two local game stores, so I don't even care. The uh, base is cut off. You can go through there now. Yes, Eric Holland. He was awesome. Yeah, that did. He, he, he helped me out the one year for Christmas. My stepkids both wanted DSs. So I went and talked to him first, right? I was like, I'm going to come in, I'm going to do the Black Friday thing, stand in line. I was like, I told him I was going to buy him used ones because that was all we could afford. I was like, if I really want to buy them, I'm going to buy him new ones. So he set the two new ones I wanted aside, and then he got like two of the shittiest looking used ones, right? We went to school since second grade here. Oh, nice. So he sets aside these two really shitty DSs. I go in there, I got the stepkids with me. And uh, we get to the front of the line. I tell them what I want. They they show me the two DS. They're just beat to hell. They, they the screens are all screwed up and everything. They just look like ass. And I turn to the kids. I'm like, is this okay? And both the step kids not want you know they don't want to say no. They don't want to make me feel bad about that's not what they want. They're like, yeah, that's okay. <laughs> so I buy them. And I was like, oh, hey, sorry, you know what you're getting for Christmas, but whatever. Wrapped them up like I they, they watched me wrap the presents. <laughs> then the next day I take them to school 
grab the do two used DSs, go back to the GameStop, <laughs> trade them in, get the, the two new ones that I wanted. Man, they freaked the fuck out on Christmas Day. <laughs> They thought they were getting these shitty, beat-up, used ones. They got the two new ones that were, like, the colors they wanted and everything. He moved to the mall. Then haven't seen him in years now, but he let me get my GTA 3, even though I pre-ordered. They didn't have it on file, but he knew me, so he let me get it. Yeah, yeah, I liked how that mall, the GameStop in the mall, up till about 2011, still had a sign that says Babbage's. That was awesome. Like, you'd go there just to be like, yeah, I shopped that at Babbage's. But then somebody from corporate came and ruined that. Stupid corporate. <laughs> I like tricks on kids. Well, now you got one to play on yours, man. You got you to gotta do that. I feel like I, I had all these stories planned out to tell about my boy Patrick, and now... We're, we're reminiscing about our days in North Carolina. <laughs> that's all right. That's all right. That's that's what streaming is for, though. Oh, it's sudden death. Got him. I love the throw and the backdrop power. I found them to be kind of fun. See, now, I know a lot of people hate water levels in games. Kirby's not too bad. He moves about the same in water that he does on land. But I know a lot of people tend to hate water levels. I always liked them because I like shooters. And with the water levels, you know, you've got that whole plane of movement like you would get in a shooter. But not in Sonic. I hate it. Like, as much as I love the Sonic games, I hate the water levels in Sonic. That water stage in Donkey Kong Country I always liked. I think because the soundtrack in that level is really cool. And it reminded me of uh, the New Age artist Yanni. It reminded me like of some of his music. That dude, that dude could compose a song. That's a guy uh, I saw in concert. Probably like 98. And you think, oh, he's a New Agey guy. He probably doesn't do like... Like, I've only been to a handful of concerts, but that that and then the Halloween concert I went to last September were easily the two best concerts I've ever been. Like, dude knows how to put on a concert. Like, you know, some bands don't do good live, but, but those two were phenomenal. I like it when we had different stores. Now it's all GameStop. Ed McKay closed. Ah, oh, damn, I remember... So I bought my copy of Faria at Ed McKay's. I'd been looking for... So after I'd played like Crystallis and all that shit that summer, I was looking for more games like that, and I'd come across that game Faria. And I couldn't find a copy online or anything. It wasn't until I was in Ed McKay's in like 08 or 09 that I saw a copy there for like 30 bucks and picked that up. I sold that this past year at... Um, Midwest Gaming Classic, uh, I, uh, back in the day, Gamer had said that was one of the top of the game, top of his list of games he wanted, and I was like, yo, I got a copy, I'll, I'll sell it to you, so I brought it with me, and, and that was like completely broke at that point, so I sold it to him for like 60 bucks, because it's going for like 80 plus now, and I was like, well, I know the person is going to, I know, no, he's not going to resell it, I'll sell it to him. So you sell them for like 60 and then I took the 60 and bought a bunch of games there. It's like all the games I bought there came off of selling that title. They're still in Riley and Greens Greensboro. Yeah, around here we've got Half Price Books, which is kind of the same thing. But th th I don't have them in Sheboygan. They're down like in Milwaukee. But yeah, I, I, lo I, lo would, I would always, as soon as I was bored on a day, I'd go to Ed McKay's and just walk around. And then I used to go to um, it was one of the flea markets near where I'd take my stepdaughter to uh, her dance classes. They had like not one but two pagan supply stores in this uh, in this uh, place. And there's a lady there. Her name was uh, Shadowstorm. Shadowstorm Norwicka. She was a girl that worked there. She had moved to Chicago, I guess, like right after I had left North Carolina as well. But yeah, they had that. She worked for the Pagan Supply, so I just love going and looking. That's where I got 
my my green man chalice here was from one of those pagan stores in one of the uh, uh, that was actually a Christmas present for my ex-wife. My so Fayetteville had a lot of uh, a lot more flea markets than you you would think for a, a town of that size. But those were always fun to go look around at. Whew. You know, I got like four games picked out, and um, the way that alcohol is hitting me, I might only get through the one. Regardless, we're, we're going to play Popeye after this to make sure we hit up Popeye. So my buddy Sean, Sean McCaney, he was an RP I served with. We, I got to tell the story how I met him. We met in boot camp. Oh, you guys are going to love this story. Bragg was the trashy one. Rayford Road had the pagan store. Yes, yes, because Rayford Road had two pagan stores. One was like Silver Sisters Cottage, and I forget what the other one was called. But yeah, they had like two pagan stores in there. And then the Bragg one is where I did most of my video game shopping. In fact, my copy of Puss and Boots here... There are some guys that would do, they would only be there like once a month, but I told them I was looking for Puss in Boots. And the guy had got it in a lot he bought off of eBay, and I was like, I'll give you like five bucks for it. And he was like, yeah, that's cool. And I remember going there, and him uh, him seeing me walking up, and he recognized me. He's like, yo, Puss in Boots, I got your game. So, Bragg, it depended on like the Saturday. It might have been okay. But yeah, the Rafer Road one was, was the nice one. And the guys that were, there was like a booth that had a lot of games. And it was funny because those are the guys I got my master system from. Those are the ones I sold my uh, my old toaster model to. And that I had gotten, uh, gave them all those copies of the Mario Duck Hunt were at the Bragg one. But it was funny because he sold, he sold like video games. And then he sold um, porn. So a lot of times my stepkids would be with me. He'd like kind of like shove the porn to the side. But there were a lot of games. Like if he didn't move the inventory, I'd go in and be talking to him. And be like, hey, do you have this on Nintendo or whatever? I'm like, no, I don't have that. But I don't have any money to spend right now. He's like, dude, this has been in my shop for like a year. It's yours. Oh, that's cool, Dale. Though you have your own puss in boots. Yeah, hold on, because it's sitting right here. Not only that, so I actually really like the uh, the Toei Puss in Boots movies. I had the first the first movie on DVD. Uh, the second movie that the game is based on, Puss in Boots Travels Around the World. I used to have a VHS copy of that. That's gone. That's actually, I always thought it was just those two, and then years ago, just a few years ago, I found out it was actually three movies. And Travels Around the World, which the game is based on, is actually the third movie. And the second movie is like Puss in Boots. It's called like Three Musketeers in Boots or something. But it got released in the U.S. Uh, as as like Ringo Rides West. Like who the fuck is Ringo? The character's name was Paro. And it was like a, like only released as like a really low budget DVD release that was like in uh the uh like like dollar store <laughs> DVDs. Which has made it, like, I've not been able to find a copy of that. Yeah, I love the, the Toei Puss in Boots, though. Do you have the manual? Oh, I wish I did. I don't. And, and that game also had an episode, not only is that based on a movie, and really a movie franchise, there was an episode of Captain N about that was, like, based on that game, too. But yeah, Puss in Boots is one of my set aside for today. We're, we're definitely going to play some Popeye after this, though. When I was playing around on my Odroid, because there's so many games on there, I was going through my the Game Gear games, and I found a Japanese release, and it said, uh, I always love this shot in this game, by the way. It said, like, Popeye Volleyball. And I was like, that's got to be like a typo. It was probably like some English thing or something. But I clicked on the game, and no, it was... It was a beach volleyball game featuring the characters from Popeye, and it is a fucking cool-ass game. Like, 
if you if you emulate Game Gear titles, Popeye Volleyball is one to definitely check out. Man, I'm at about the halfway mark of this thing. I'm regretting this decision, but it needed to be made. Because as soon as I made it, I felt better. Like, I'm, I'm not feeling all depressed and down anymore. If fuck Google Plus can stream drunk off his ass, and I got a pretty good alcohol tolerance, I should be able to stream buzzed. Yes, Popeye Volleyball on the Game Gear. James, you got to check that out, man. You being a fellow fan of handhelds and, and, and the Game Gear, it is, it is totally worth playing. And, unless you pick, because, you know, Beach Volleyball is like, what? I think it's actually three people. It's like teams of three. But in this game, it's teams of two, but you get to pick your two. So, like, when you start off, you've got, like, four different characters you can pick from. So, like, I, I, my first team was Popeye and Olive Oil, of course, because why not? And there's different locations you play in. and uh, I'm a huge Popeye fan. Yeah, dude, you got to check out Popeye Beach Volleyball on the Game Gear, then. That is a fun-ass game. On that note, um, I've, told, I've talked to uh, Bob Knows about this one. But the other one I found was a Game Boy Color game. It was uh, Snoopy Tennis. And it's, it's in that same vein as the Popeye Volleyball. It is just phenomenal. It is a must play. That alcohol has hit me. Like, it doesn't even matter that I ate first, man. It's it's hit me. Probably because I've been drinking it fast. I've done this before where I've done, like, a, on the full moon, I'll, I would offer, like, an entire bottle of mead to the god Mani. And, uh... I'd pour it into there, and, and, and I'd drink, but I, I would drink it over the course of the day. For you know, That's the nice thing about this, sort of like, yeah, I offer up mead to the gods, you know, you, you get to drink the mead. <laughs> oh, hey, there's a secret down here. So, but you know, drinking over the course of the day, I'd get a little buzzed, but I was fine, but I've kind of been chugging it. We've been at it for an hour and 55 minutes. I'm about halfway through the tankard. I'm a little bit more than buzzed. I love peanuts too. Snoopy, yeah, Snoopy tennis rules. Yeah, yeah, penis is also one of those. I, I, I love those characters, man. So, my first time trying mead. This goes good with what we've been talking about. Like I said, I've, I have a weird alcohol tolerance. Like, some sometimes I'm fine. I could drink two or three bottles and it not phase me. Other times I have a glass and I'm like plastered. And I can't predict these things. Because meat is usually between 5 and 11%. Uh, White Winter does two of these fancy ones. They have their Holiday Harbor and their Black Harbor. And those are each like 32% alcohol volume. Should have grabbed that parasol. As, as a lifelong Taito fan, knowing parasol stars, I should know that a parasol must be get given into these situations. But anyway, so so meat is usually is generally between five and, and eleven to twelve percent. There's some harder stuff like like the two I just mentioned. The first time I had meat, it was wet winter sweet, and the guy I worked with, John, he because that was when I was a robot operator. He was another robot operator. I would throw dinner parties. Japan got way more Popeye games. Yes, they do. So I would throw dinner parties, but because I'm old school and I like like the, the middle ages and stuff, I didn't throw a dinner party, I threw a feast. So I was having all my feast and my because we I'd always wanted to try mead. So that was a wee lad. Seeing it mentioned in games like Wonder Boy and, and, and even later on and stuff like uh, Viking Battle for Asgard and Skyrim, I had to try mead. And it's funny because I don't really generally like alcoholic beverages, and then mead like instantly was I liked it. 
So it was like predestined. <laughs> uh, but anyway, I bought a bottle of White Winter Sweet because that was the only one I found. But John was coming. He was going to stop at Woodman's Market because they had most of White Winter's stuff in, 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 uh, in stock. And he knew this. So I stop. I buy from my local store a bottle of sweet. Just to have it on hand. I was like the I was like that needle power, but I hate that it goes away. Like all the other ones like spark and ice you can use forever. And the needle one like takes itself away from you. But anyway. So I buy the bottle of white winter sweet. I'm still on track here. <laughs> and I was like, I'm gonna have a glass while I'm waiting for my guests to arrive. And I have a glass. I was like, damn, this is good. I have another glass. And another glass. Next thing you know, that entire bottle has been drunk by me. But it's okay, because dude, because John's coming, and he's bringing the sweet, and raspberry, and strawberry, and blueberry. He brought pretty much all of them, but like the maple and the black. Popeye Volleyball is an $80 game? Fuck. I mean, I like the game, but it ain't even worth that. You gotta emulate that shit, homie. So anyway, I drink this whole bottle of mead, and I'm waiting for my guest. And I don't remember much. I remember finishing off the bottle and not thinking anything of it. And the next thing I know, I hear a knock at the door. And I'm looking around, and I'm sitting in the bathtub. I got like a full bath. Like I'm just like chilling out in my bath, like a hot, like a hot bath and everything. Chilling out. Moe's death, I was gonna buy it, but nah. Yeah, yeah, I know, emulate that one, dude. I don't even remember, like, deciding to take a bath, especially when I'm uh, expecting guests to come over for, for a dinner party, right? So. Ah, oh, fuck this one. This one was always hard to get. Eventually, I did get it as a kid at some point, and I was like, I feel satisfied. I'm not going for 100% today, so it's all good. So I get up, answer the door, I like try to find some clothes, I can't find some clothes. I like grab the towel, and I'm not, I don't even wrap the towel, I'm like holding it over my junk. Answer the door, and my, my, with just the towel in front of me, and it's my two neighbors from across the hall of my apartment who are coming over. And they look at me, and I'm just like standing there smiling, like, yeah. And they look at me, and one of them goes, are you drunk? I think it was the wife asked if I was drunk, and I looked at her, and I looked over at her husband, and I go, I like mead. That's all I had to say. Like, I like mead. <laughs> and it's just cracking up. <laughs> so it wears off on me. Uh, John shows up. Like I said, he brought the sweet, the blueberry, the raspberry, the strawberry. I, I think that was... There was there was one... I think he did buy a bottle of the black. It's called black, and the black is basically a, like... It's like a mead, but instead of being a white wine, it's a red wine. And they have two. They have the Black Harbor and just the regular black. And I've, I've, I've had them both. The Black Harbor is probably one of the most amazing wines you will ever have. It blows my mind how good it is. Um, and that was like, that was expensive. Me and me and my buddy went halves on a bottle of that. And it was the best thing ever. And that, that was actually the one I wanted when I did the... The Blackberry one, when I invited Twitchy out, and I told him we were going to do a video on Highlander. I was like, well, let's just do a video, we'll do it on whatever you want. He's like, yeah, let's talk about Highlander, I love those movies. I was actually planning on buying a bottle of the Black Harbor Mead, because it was expensive, and then sharing that, and then, then they didn't have it in stock. And they've not had it in stock since. Ooh. So, anyway... So, he buys all these, and I think the black is the one. Is either the black or the cherry? And I did eventually, I think it was the cherry, actually. That, um, it didn't, it, like, fell over in his, his, uh, his car, the trunk of his car, and broke. So, we didn't have that. But, so, I drank the bottle, an entire bottle of sweet by myself. Then he brought a bottle of sweet. 
a bottle of strawberry, a bottle of blueberry, a bottle of the cider, and a bottle of the raspberry. So he bought five more. Between the four of us. We each had like two glasses of each. So, at this point I drank like three bottles of meat. And, and, and you know, I'm not, again, I'm not really a drink a drinker. Uh, especially this time. And uh, it was funny because John was like, yeah, you know, meat doesn't have a whole lot of alcohol content. It's only like, a this stuff's only about 11%. He's like, glad I made a comment about getting drunk. And he's like, oh, I won't be drunk. He was the one. Out of the four of us, he was the one in my bathroom puking. <laughs> and the funny thing, the funny thing, because I told him, like, I was meeting my dad for breakfast the next day. My dad would go to church, and then we'd have breakfast together. And I had to drive down to Milwaukee for that. So I was like, I, I, like, everybody's drunk. I was like, you guys can all stay here. I was like, you know, crash out on the couch or on the floor or whatever. Find a place. I was like, I don't want you guys driving home drunk. I was like, I will probably be gone when you wake up. Just... Let yourself out. Make sure the dog doesn't get out. And make sure my, my, my door is locked. We're good. But yeah, John was the one who, <laughs> Mr. Oh, I, I could, he's like, I, I would never get drunk off of, off of mead. And he's the one, the only one in the bathroom puking for half the night. <laughs> I had more to drink than any of because I had that one whole bottle to myself. I was fine. Went, went to bed, got up, went and met my dad. It was all good. Popeye Wrestling. If that is a game, I need to play it. That would be freaking awesome. Okay. The Popeye movie with um, Robin Williams. I know I love this fight. I know it was a box office bomb, but that is such a good movie. Like, And then it's a musical. And movie mu like musicals work really good on stage. Movie wise, it's a really like it doesn't really work quite as well, and and then for them to take something like Popeye and then decide to do it as a musical, and it be like as good as it was, like it's not great, but it's good. That was a feat, and that that city, um, Sweet Haven, that they had to build that city. That's in uh Malta. the The set is still there because again they built the city. Including the breakwater for the um, for the movie, and that's actually a big tourist attraction now. It's called the Popeye Village, and it's like a big tourist attraction. I would love to go there. I love the way they did. I love they how everything looks all crooked, and it's got like that German expressionist style to it. I freaking love that. Popeye movie rules. Bluto is also in pieces, and. An Italian classic horror film. Oh, I gotta see that. Meta Knight is kicking my ass. Gotta get together for a second here so I can try and try and get through this fight. Yeah, the Popeye movie, I I love that. Me me and Sean, that was when we we had like we would get together almost every weekend and just watch movies. And that was one of them that we would always we'd watch. So Sean got this tattoo when you are in Japan. He wanted something. He's like, I'm in Japan, and I'm in the Navy. He goes, I need something that says Japan, Navy. He came up with this sign. Dude's a fantastic artist. Look up Sean McCaney illustrations on Facebook. You'll see his stuff. Dude is unreal. He always has been, and he's just gotten better over about the, almost 20 years I've known him. But uh, he, he designed this tattoo. It's on his arm. It's on his left arm, I believe. His original design was this huge gold Asian style dragon, and he had sweet pea writing on it. He he did he changed eventually. The one he how he ended up getting it in the end was it had um Bluto on it, but it's unreal. It's all his own design. It looks fantastic. It's maybe not classic, but it's pretty great. Places it's probably on YouTube. I I will have to check that out. But yeah, um, Sean McCain illustrations. You guys, I gotta tell the story, even though you know, you know, it's 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 it was meant to be the memorial for my buddy Patrick, and and of course Sean knew him too. Um, me and Sean met in boot camp. I might have told this on this the, on a live stream before. I don't know. But so, 
I, I was one of those really angsty teenager types. And that carried on into my early, even into my mid-twenties. I woke up, woke up for Popeye cartoons on YouTube the other night. Stay up to three, I'm watching. I totally get a Popeye tattoo. Nice. We're in the final stage. So, um, me and Sean, I, well, well, because, you know, being a religious program specialist, I wanted to learn, I mean, I had to learn about all these different religions. So during boot camp, every Sunday I would go to a different, uh, Religious service. Because you can only hit one or two up each Sunday. Because the way they overlap. It's probably my third week of boot camp. Third or fourth week of boot camp. I go to the Unitarian service. If you could call it a service. It was more of a lecture type of thing. It was pretty cool though. Unitarian, Universalist. They kind of take the route that all religions are right to a degree. I'm a hard polytheistist. Polytheists, polytheist. So I kind of fall into that group. Like I have my gods, but I don't deny like other ones could exist. Anyway, I go to the Unitarian Universals, and the guy, the the chaplain for that, he wants everybody to introduce yourselves. He he wants your like name, what your job rating is gonna be, and all that. So I was like, you know, I gave my name. I says I'm gonna be a religious program specialist. And Sean's sitting next to me. Now, I'm Mr. Angsty Guy. Sean's Mr. Happy Guy. He's like super happy-go-lucky. And he he looks at me. I'm not even getting... He's just like, Hey, you're going to be an RP? I'm going to be an RP too. And I'm like, Okay. And he goes... He's like, Where's your A school going to be? I says, Well, Meridian, Mississippi. That's the only place to do the, the RP or A school. And he goes... I'm going to be in, in Meridian 2. Hi, Pixelated Gamer. Good to meet you. I'm glad you're here. You're getting into the middle of the story. Sorry about that. And I just totally threw my controller across the room, but not in a rage. She's like, yeah, I'm going to I'm gonna be in Miss Meridian, Mississippi 2. And I just look at it and trying to, trying my best to imitate how happy-go-lucky he seems, I look at him and I go, Oh, well, I bet we're going to be the fat best of friends, you fucker. And I just kind of go back to being my angsty, stupid self. So we get through boot camp. I see him a few more times. Don't really talk to him. Get to Mississippi. Get go, doing the, the A school and all that. And uh, I know who he is. Me, him, and then our buddy Josh. Josh Syrick, Who everybody called Shrek. Because his name looked like Shrek without the H, and it was just easier for everyone. Got a huge Kirby plush and a Kirby drawing. He's easy to draw. He is easy to draw, and yet he looks badass and cool. I did a whole video on how metal Kirby is. Don't check that out now, though, because I'm streaming. So we're in school. Like I said, I, I realized who Sean is right away. I guess he didn't recognize me, but I didn't know he didn't recognize me. So, I'm going back from, I had like the, 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 the night watch or something one day, and I'm coming off of that, it's about dinner time, and I'm walking to the courtyard, and we're near the smoke deck where all the guys are out smoking, and Sean's like, it's like, uh, building's like in, in like a big square, and there's like a big, uh, grass area in the middle where everybody's smoking, and like, my, my room is over on this side, and Sean's is over on this side. So Sean comes out of his room, I'm walking back to my room, and I see him across the, the courtyard, and he he sees me, and he just comes running, and I just come around like, hey, Sean, how you doing, man? He comes up as I'm waving, and punches me in the stomach as hard as he can. I fall over, I'm on the ground like, what the hell, you know? Everybody sees this, like, everybody stops and watches, like, these two guys are fighting, and he looks at me and goes... I just remembered the first time you met me, fucker. And I just looked at him like, oh, yeah. I deserve that, man. I totally deserve that. And he's like, yes, you did. Puts his hand out. Helps me up off the ground. He's like, want to go get dinner? I'm like, hell yeah, I want to go get dinner. We go get dinner together. Because that, like, Sean is like, he's a brother to me. He really is. He is as much family as it gets. And everybody's just watching, like, hey, you know, that guy just punched that guy as hard as he could. Now they're going to get dinner together? What the hell? 
So I had messaged him on Facebook um, probably about a year ago. Um, I'm pretty picky about my Facebook friends. I don't even actually have him as a Facebook friend, surprisingly. Uh, I had messaged him just out of nowhere, like, like, it was like, Asterix punches you in the stomach as hard as he can, Asterix, and then the next line, like, I just remembered the first time you remembered the first time you met me, fucker. <laughs> he, he just cracks up laughing, he's like, that, he's like, that's, he's like, this will never, you know, almost 20 years later, it's still funny to us, so. Oh, okay, back to, back to Kirby. So. So me and Sean would get together like every weekend and, and, and watch movies. And I there was a there was a story. Popeye. We would watch Popeye. We had it to the point where we had like the songs memorized. We had a night since he he was on chapel duty, like I was battalion, he was chapel. And then our buddy James Walsh was another RP, he was chapel as well. So they could get into the chapel. Most of the chapels had uh they had big screen TVs. So we decided to have like a drag queen movie night. So we watched uh, Tu Wong Fu. Um, tu Wong Fu. Um, Priscilla, Queen of the Desert. And um, what was the other one? The Rocky Horror Picture Show. We watched all those one night. <laughs> and so, uh, you know, we, we, we had watched those. And like the next night he had come to, like it was like a week later, he came to visit me at my base. And uh, we'll go walk. We're walking up the stairs to the barracks, and then the other RP uh, James, he's sitting there, and he's just sitting on the stairs. <laughs> and I, like quoting the movie, I just turned to Sean, and I'm like, I'm like, Miss Noxima, find out why this little Latin boy in drag is crying. <laughs> and Sean walks up to James and goes, Little Latin boy in drag, why are you crying? <laughs> and then James quotes, uh. Um, John Leguizamo's line from the movie, <laughs> and there's a couple Marines watching us like, what is up with these three idiots? <laughs> we're just quoting movies, you know, they had no idea, and we're just cracking up laughing. Oh man, that was, like, like, those are such good, t like, they were bad times, but they were good times, you know. Sean really got messed with by his superior, like, like, we all did, but he really, like, you know it's the military, you expect people to essentially be dicks because that's how the military, they overdid it to that man, they mistreat, he did so much there and they just were not good to him, they, I, w I would go up to his base and spend like the weekends with him and he'd be on chapel duty and I'd go hang out with him while he was on duty, I, I watched it, it was, it was one of the chaplains like chewed him out for a good 20 minutes I don't remember what it was for, but I, I just, I remember, whatever it was this chaplain thought was wrong, wasn't actually wrong, and we couldn't get him to, like, stop, like, stuff like that would happen, it's like, that's not cool. Divine rules, John Waters is God. Yes, yes, James gets it. Gotta have a drag queen movie night. You have to. Ugh. Yeah, we had, like, got a bunch of frozen pizzas and made them in the chapel's uh, kitchen. And then sat there and watched the drag queen movies on the big screen. Good stuff. You know, like, they, they, I watched those movies, like, all three of them. I don't even really care for Rocky Horror that much. It's one of those movies I watch maybe, like, once a decade. With the other two, Priscilla, Queen of the Desert, and uh, Tu Wong Fu. Um, a couple times a year with both of those. It's one of those, like, I feel like Tu Wong Fu's the better movie. But, um, I think Priscilla really represents that that, that culture better. Even though they're, they're very similar and were made completely independent of each other. That's kind of cool, too. But I watched those. I just think of that night of the three of us. Three straight guys watching those movies <laughs> in the chapel in Okinawa. Like, it's just, it's just that sort of thing. You, you, know, you know, you can't make that shit up, man. That's, that's camaraderie building right there. This one night, uh, 
he was on leave and he had come back and then it was like too late because we had like curfews and he couldn't really get back to his base. It was like better if he stayed off base, but he was able to get to my base. So he gets there and he goes to my barracks and it was like me and my roommate and James. It was like right after James got there. So, we, so Sean hadn't met him yet. And we had uh, one of the corpsmen in our room. We were playing card games. I think we were playing Yu-Gi-Oh. And it, the way they had the rules, like if you had like somebody of the opposite sex in your, your barracks room, you had to have the door propped open. So the door propped open. So Sean's walking. He doesn't know what room I'm in because we change rooms like every six weeks. So he just kind of cracks the door open. He's like, hey, you guys know we're RP3? And he sees me. He's like, oh, hey, man. I'm like, yeah, hey, I'm right here. <laughs> He's like, can I crash here for the night? Yeah, sure. You don't mind sleeping on the floor. It's good. <laughs> I'm debating getting a tattoo of a Ouija board on my stomach. What do you think? Y'all know I've got a love-hate relationship for my talking boards. I say go for it. There's a, uh, it's a, uh, like a living room set where it's like the rugs, the Ouija board, and then there's a, um, it's the, uh, what do you call it? It's the plant shit. It's a coffee table is the plant shit. And there was a great meme done for it. I'm like, I think it's cool. I'd love to have something like that. But, uh, the, the meme, it had the picture of it, and it said something like, your living room's all fun and games until your Roomba summons the devil. <laughs> so I do have um, some paranormal folks tales I'm going to do. I wanted to go down to Milwaukee to uh, Whitnell Park. I want to redo my Whitnell Park episode. And I was like, oh, I could go to Whitnell Park and get footage of me next to the, the waterfall. But since my truck doesn't have brakes in the back... I'm not going to drive like an hour and a half down to Milwaukee to get, get like five minutes worth of footage. It ain't worth risking my life or possibly somebody else's on the freeway for that shit. But I've got one from Okinawa, and then I'm going to redo that one. I put a thing on Twitter asking if anybody else has some they want to film it and submit it. But I haven't heard anybody. Nobody's gotten back to me from that. So I you at least get a double episode. I probably have gruesome spelled on it. Don't want to summon ghosts. <laughs> That would be fucking awesome, dude. You gotta do that. But anyway. Um, so my Ouija board story, there is an episode of Folks Tales where I tell about this. Because I do a lot of my paranormal experiences with my Ouija boards. I have an update to this one. I'm not going to give all these. I'm just going to give the basic Ouija board. We had my old mom's old Ouija board. It is here. It's in, the ca it's in this little end table over here. It's got uh, openings on both ends. It's shoved into there. The one end is up against the wall, and this big, uh, big entertainment center my main, my main TV is on. It's up against the other side, so it is not accessible. It is in here in the house. You cannot access it. Um, so yeah, it's not. But anyway, my mom. We have my mom's old Ouija board. I mean, my sister used to play with that all the time as kids, and we had. You got to go back and watch the full episode. I'm not going to tell everything about it here. We had some really bad experiences with it, like, and it, it was on us, really. We didn't really understand how the board worked or how to use it. This is a great day off. I'm having a blast hanging out. I am glad to hear that, James. I am glad to have you here as well. But anyway, when we moved from Iowa from this farmhouse we were staying on that summer to Wisconsin, I threw the Ouija board, my mom's old Ouija board, into the trash can. We get to our house in, uh, Milwaukee and the Ouija board is there and you don't think anything of it it's like oh you know my mom or my dad could have saw it sitting on top of the trash can and grabbed it out of there no big deal we moved from that house to our second house in Wisconsin um I threw the Ouija board out again and I made sure it was like the last it was like a eight or nine o'clock at night on a Friday it was the very last load this was it. We were never going back to that house. I uh, threw it in the trash, and it was like an empty trash can, you know, the, the, the actual dumpster out by the alley. I threw it in there. Get to the new house, unpacking things, and putting away all of our board games. And it's like, I have like Tuberuba, Clue, Parcheesi, and there's the Ouija board. And I'm like, 
And it was like down in the bottom of this, and I'm like, that's really weird. Like, if if even somebody were to pull pulled it out of this garbage, this dumpster, which I don't think they would have, why is it at the bottom of the box? Whatever. Again, somebody could have pulled it out, and I just didn't know it. So I put it in this cabinet we had, and it stayed there with like all of our board games and stuff. <coughs> I believe this deserves some meat. So, we're, the basement was being refinished when we bought the house. And we were going to finish it. And uh, they were redoing some work at my parents' church at the time, which would have been my church as well at the time. Um, and some, somebody had, like, a uh, truck had dropped some sheep rock, it looked like, and somebody had pulled, like, they dropped it in the street, and they, they moved it out of the street by, next to the, the area by the church, and that, at Sunday, my dad had asked if that was, like, the sheet rock for when they were remodeling the church, and everybody told him, like, no, that it was just dropped by a truck, and they, they figured the truck didn't know it dropped. So we decided to go after church, and, and after we'd gotten home, after, we were like, well, let's go back. If nobody's picked it up, we're going to take it because we, we could use it to redo the uh, redo our basement. And we got lucky because it turns out it was just enough sheetrock to do the whole, like, all the walls in this basement. It was really lucky. Like, saved us so much money. So, anyway, we go back. It's there. We throw it in the back of my dad's pickup. We take it. It's all good. So my dad's putting the sheetrock up, and, and, you know, we're doing the plaster in between the, the sections of the sheetrock, and I'm helping him. So we had, like, the four walls. And this one back wall, it was a short wall. I was working on that. And I think my dad went to, like, I had eaten lunch, and then my dad was going to go eat lunch, because we didn't, it was like, we did it in shifts, so that somebody was always working to try and get the, the job done faster. So my dad goes to his lunch, and I'm doing this wall, and I was like, hey... By myself, I get this idea. So I go grab my mom's old Ouija board, and I stick it in the sheetrock. And I stick it, like, in the middle of this wall. It's like a short wall. I put it, like, in the middle of the wall, put the panel up, put the next two panels up. It's done. Uh, it's, it's in the wall. It's in the middle of this wall. There's, like, these plaster strips that, you know, the wall, you know, the, um, the plaster to hold the things in place, you know, the sheetrock has been, I think we nailed the edges into place, and then we had some pieces of uh, plaster we put in where, you know, the pieces met in the seams. Did all that, me and my dad, you know, we painted them. Okay, so the whole wall, I did. It was, it was a small wall, I did it. Boy, you can really tell that alcohol hit me. The, the Ouija board's in there. It's right in the middle of it. You couldn't screw this up at all. It was there for years. Uh, my mom dies in uh, Christmas of 2013. It's like 2015. My dad was getting ready to move to Iowa, get remarried. He's moving back to Iowa. And he calls me up, and he's like, Hey, I've got your mom's old Ouija board here. Do you want it? And I was like, I'm sorry, what? He goes, I've got your mom's old Ouija board here. I offered it to your sister. She said she didn't want anything to do with it. She wanted to know if you wanted it. And I says, if you've got it, I'll take it, but you don't have it. He goes, no. I'm, he's like, I'm looking right at it. I says, no, man. It's inside that wall in the basement, that far wall. He goes, I'm like, I says, the one I did the sheetrock for, I put it in there. I said, that, you know, that was right after we bought the house. That was almost 20 years ago. And he goes, huh, that's weird. I'm looking right at it, and I'm like, okay, I'll take it. And I, you know, went to have our our Sunday money Sunday brunch, and he gave me my mom's old Ouija board. No idea. I was the only one who knew it was in there. I didn't tell anybody else about it. Nobody had seen it in almost twenty years, and then there it was. Gave it to me. So I, because when I moved in into this house. I was asked to get rid of it, and I was like, you know what, it was my mother's, after trying to get rid of it three times and it not being successful, I'm not getting rid of it, it's like, I, I have to keep it, I can't, so I hid it away, I'm, I know where it is, well, not everybody knows where it is, because I just told you where it is, but it's not at all accessible, uh-oh, <laughs> so, yeah, 
It's kind of like in the mask. Every time he throws the mask away, he, he would come back to him. So that is the story. Of, like, if you want the more in depth of all the stuff that happened with the board, I do have a video on that. I need to organize uh, my videos. I've got all my uh, mead videos set up in a playlist. But I need to do, like, all the folks tales and all the game raids and stuff. Something I've been meaning to do. It takes, like, five minutes, and I get so busy that I can't even do that. Oh, I should have swallowed that because I had the mix. So, yes, the Ouija board is something, like, I, I, I'm in love with it. I'm pretty much obsessed with it. But at the same time, I don't want to mess with it. Some things you have to keep. My wife went through a religious phase. She wanted me to get rid of some books, but there's better. But, yeah. My ex-wife, I'm sure she still has this in Fayetteville. She had got me a, a Ouija board. I had found it on some website. It was really cool. It looked like a tombstone. This thing was really cool. And it was just one of those things I found. I was like, this is cool. I'd love to have something like this. And then, uh, guess we won't be doing that. She, uh, had ordered it for me, but I didn't know it. And then we were coming home from something one day, and this package was there for me, and I'm like, I didn't order anything. I ain't got no money. What am I ordering? And it was this custom-made Ouija board, but the thing is, she had ordered it, like, months in advance, and they were all made to order, but as it turns out, uh, it, it was late arriving because they had a death in the family. I love this level. I love how this is like the uh, original Game Boy Kirby level in the, in this second to last stage. Anyway, well, it turns out this family is like a family that makes these boards and everything. They had started work on the board and they had like, it was like the grandfather or whatever had passed away. And then they got sidetracked with that and then she had like messaged them like, you know, I ordered this board like two months ago. It says it take like a month. It's been two months. You're like, oh, hey, sorry, you know, this we had this death in the family. We'll get right on that. So it was one of those, like, I always felt like maybe the um, the spirit of this guy was, was attached to that board. And uh, and it, just, it always, that, like, the, the board did, it felt different. Not in a bad way. And it was just something I wanted for decoration, so I, I, I kept it, and it was, um, I always kept it on uh, goodbye because weird shit. Both the houses I had in North Carolina had shit happening in them. But uh, I always kept that on goodbye sort of as like a safety. But every Halloween I'd move it to hello and things would amp up considerably on Halloween. But I had some Mormon missionaries stop by and I was talking to them. So, I, you know, I'm always curious to learn about other people's beliefs. And one of them was really uneasy about the board until I told him, like, oh, it's just decoration. And he's like, you don't use it. I'm like, oh, no. I'm like, I was like, I've had bad experience with that. I wouldn't use it again. And he's like, okay, cool. And he's, like, he's like, it still creeps me out, but knowing that you don't use it, we're good. And the other missionary was like, I think it's really cool. <laughs> Which just goes to show you, know, you know, everybody's different. Like, the one guy didn't even want to be in the room with it. And the other guy was like, that thing's awesome. So I've never, I've wanted to talk about these on the channel. I've never had the opportunity for like a couple days from Halloween. So the first, the first house I had in Fayetteville was, uh, we rented it. And there was, uh, we always hear this, it sounded like a little girl laughing all the time. And she wasn't sinister, but one thing we had was we had, sh like, really bad shadow people in that house. Like, you could tell something was going on. Before I had Thor, the story of Thor goes that I had, oh, my ex-wife had gotten a cat for me. What are in Fayetteville? Hey, what? <laughs> yeah, both the houses I had were, were Fayetteville. So... My ex-wife got me this cat, because I wanted some kind of a pet. So I, I'd had cats before. She got me a cat. By the way, the cat hated me. He didn't want nothing to do with me. He was, he, he was all about her. He didn't want nothing to do with me. But he was always getting into trouble. The neighborhood or area. Um, this house was in College Lakes. College Lakes was the first area we had. It was, um... 
Appalachian Avenue. Appalachian Avenue. Uh, excuse me. So, oops. I'm about to go fight DDDDD. DDDDD, um. Let me get a drink here. So, she gives me this cat. He's, he didn't have a name for like the first two weeks, but he's always getting into stuff. So I was like, hey, let's call him Loki because he's really mischievous. So we call him Loki. But I get this idea because he's always like, he's, he, would, he did not like me at all. And he was just into everything. And I was like, let's see if we can find like another free kitten on Craigslist or whatever. And, uh. What year was this? Um, 2008. 2008 to 2009. So, we get to sell a cat. I, I really wanted to find, because he was, you know, he's a boy. I wanted to find another male cat. So, just like make sure they're the same sex. That'd be a lot easier. And uh, I'm just going to let him kill me so I can try this again. So. I, I tried for weeks to find male kittens, and all of them that I found that were free were female kittens. And I finally, I go to one, and I tell him, like, and I was like, I'm getting him, basically I'm getting a cat for my cat. I was like, do you mind if I bring him with me, and, like, so he can see, like, whichever ones he's getting along with is the one we'll take. And they're like, yeah, that's cool. So I take him with, and I had a bunch of kittens, and all the other kittens just ignored the crap on him. That was right after I left that area, but I, I did deliver there near MacArthur. Yes, MacArthur was right there. Yes, you got it. So I take Loki with me, and like so like every other kitten in this house, want, they, they had a pretty big litter. None of them wanted anything with them but one. And with this one girl, they, they're just playing together, and I was like, well, I was hoping he'd pick a, a male, but whatever. Because now i got to make sure I get him neutered and, and spayed, like, immediately. So... Like, this is the one he gets along with, this is the one I'll take. I'm like, I'll take her. They let me have her. And I says, do you know what you're going to name her? I says, I didn't really think about it. I'm like, but I'm calling him Loki because he's so mischievous. And I says, well, Loki's wife was Sagan. I guess I'll name her Sagan. So that that that's how I had Loki and Sagan. So the whole thing with Thor came as a joke with my ex-wife because I really wanted a dog. And I was like, well, we got the two cats. I was like, if we were to get a dog, we got to make sure we get something like a smaller dog so it doesn't, doesn't scare the cats. And she was like, you know, what do you want? And I, just like a total joke. is like, I want to get a toy poodle and I'll name him Thor. Because like, I already got Loki and Sagan. I'll name him Thor. Total joke. So I come home from work one day. And here's this, like, you know, because we'd sell like a bunch of poodle, like toy poodle puppies online. And one had red hair, and I was kind of like, I'm like, well, Thor was the one god who had red hair. Here's a red-headed toy poodle. He's the only one in the little litter with red red hair. That's the one I should get, and that should be Thor. I had no intention of getting him. I'd, I'd like, joke around with her, like, like yeah, man, uh, like, go get my poodle for me now, or whatever. Get home from work one day. Go in the kitchen, and she had, like, this, like, playpen set up. And here's this little red-headed poodle puppy sitting in this playpen with a little tiny doggy toy hammer next to him. That's how I got Thor. So, anyway, the reason I tell us is Thor's not in this story, but Loki is. Uh, I'm in the bathroom, and we had a cat tree next to this window for Loki and Sagan. And, uh, And then the, 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 the window is right next to the, the door to the bathroom. So I'm in the bathroom. I'm taking a dump. That is important because I'm in the bathroom for a while. And I... Loki would, like, mess with the blinds. He would just destroy the blinds. I think he was just trying to see out the window. But, of course, in his process, he was destroying the blinds. So I hear him messing with the blinds, but I know he's not going to stop if I yell at him. So I'm just like, okay, well, there's nothing I can do. I'm sitting on the toilet, and I hear this, stop it, stop it, stop it. And then I hear the girl, she basically calls me by name, you know, but she's like, Loke, Loki's being bad. 
and I'm like, jumped off the toilet, opened the door, and Loki's on his back, kind of like this, you know, like cats will do, like they want their belly rub, but he's like frozen, and he's kind of turned, and looks at me, and I'm like, I know, dude, I heard it too, and he's, that cat was freaked out, man. And he, like, this this girl would actually refer to my ex-wife as mom sometimes. We'd hear her call her mom. But again, like, mostly you'd hear her giggling. She'd always be giggling about something. I'm not beating this guy's second form with one hit point. I might. I've done it before, but I don't think it's going to happen. Because I'm wasted. Coherent enough to finish the story. So, I had a lot of interactions with ghosts and stuff, like, in, well, asleep, and they say you can usually interact with these things when dreaming. And it's the day, this is after I got Thor. I'm napping on the couch. Thor's napping on top of me. Loki and Sagan are there. I have this dream. I wake up, and I I see the girl. And she's actually got her own cat. She's got, like, this little ghost cat with her. And I'm talking to the girl. I just, I don't remember the whole conversation, but I remember asking her, I'm like, why are you here like, you know, you're always here, you're always laughing, like, why do you, like, you're not sinister, but why are you here? And she goes, I'm here to protect you, and I says, protect you from what? She goes, all of this, and I look around, and there's just shadow people all over the walls, and this house was plagued that, we'd see that all the time, and I says, well, look at them, they're everywhere, you're not doing a very good job, and she looks at me and goes, if I wasn't here, it would be worse. I just remember waking up freaked out, and Thor was freaked out, and Loki and Sagan, they all had this look on their eyes, like, they saw it too. I will never forget that. That house was terrible. So the second house was on a Blue Water Place, and I know I've told this story before. Nothing really happened to that house, but uh, I would joke with my stepkids I forget I forget what happened when I was joking about there being a ghost. And like, what do you mean there's a ghost? And I was like, yeah, I was like, if you guys aren't good, like, do your homework and listen to us. Like, because it's Blue Water Place, you know. I was like, old man Blue Water will show up and come after you. And I'm, I'm just BSing this entire, like, there had never been anything weird happened in that house at that point that I had noticed. But my former stepdaughter, she's like, starts freaking out. She's like, scared, you know. And I says, what's wrong? And she goes, there's a ghost. And I was like, told him, like, dude, I'm, I'm fucking with you. There's no ghost. And she's like, no. She's like, I've seen him. I said, what are you talking about? She goes, she goes, almost every night. She goes, I wake up almost every night at like one in the morning. And this girl, she's like eight at the time. She's like, almost every day at like eight in the morning, I wake up. And I see this ghost. It's standing at the end of my bed. She's like, it's tall. It has yellow teeth, yellow eyes, and it wears a like wide brim hat. It's like, it scares me, but it's not sinister. Like, I don't think she's sinister. I mean, again, she was like eight. But she's like, you know, she's like, it doesn't, she's like, it's not there to scare me. She's like, I think he's there to protect me, but it still freaks me out. I did have a ghost dog at my mom's, though. See, you get it. James knows. So it was like this joke, and then, but it was like after that, more and more stuff would happen at that house. And it was nothing really, really bad. But there was one day I had sort of an out-of-body experience. So I'm like napping on the couch. And the way this house is set up, you the living room was kind of its own separate room. I, I know that, that sounds like something that goes without saying, but it's like you had like a foyer when you went in with the hallway, and then it was a tri-level house. So you go in the foyer, and there's like the staircase, the second level, and then off to the left was the, the living room. So I'm in the living room sleeping, taking a nap on the couch, and I wake up, and we have three dogs at this point, because I love my animals, and the dogs are looking at me funny, and I turn around, and I can see my body on the couch. So this is total, full on out-of-body out of experience. The dogs seem to understand what's going on, they're normal, but I look over, and there's all these people walking through our house. Up and like especially up and down that staircase, and one of them was like beckoning me. It's like, come on, and I says, what? And like, you need to come. It's time. And I looked at my body. And I was like, I don't think it's time. And like, no, you need to come with us. It's time. And I was like, I'm not going anywhere with you. 
and they they got hostile, but the dogs actually came to my defense, and then I kind of like went back into my body and woke up, and the dogs were still like in those same sort of guarded positions they were when I had gone back to my body for this, this experience. But after that was when it was uh, when it, like stuff like that, like everything would happen really kind of weird. So yeah, both the houses I had in North Carolina were uber haunted. <laughs> like it's really weird. I think that second, like I don't know what was up with the first house, but I think that second house sat on some kind of a portal, and that's why we would see like all these spirits moving around. Because that one, you'd see stuff all the time, but it never seemed threatening. Versus the first house, where everything seemed kind of threatening. And, and yeah, like, the second house had more of a peacefulness to it. I believe in ghosts. I'm not religious, but they are there. Yeah, that's that's how, like, I've seen too much weird crap in my time. Which is why I like putting that out on my channel, because I've got all these experiences. I should tell them, because you're not going to hear these anywhere else. And I, I thought about, like, calling into something like uh, Jim Harold's campfire, but he could do a whole episode with me. I, I, I would almost feel bad about that. Speaking of which, one YouTuber I like, uh, Loey, Loey something, I can't even think of her name now. That's how wasted I am. She does a lot of, like, it's not, uh, some of them are her experiences, some of them are others. But she's going to be on BuzzFeed's uh, ghost hunting show. I think today, like they already filmed it and everything. So that's one to look for. She she's really cool. She's got got a lot of content like that. I think her channel's like Lowy Lovebug or something like that. She's definitely a cool person. Definitely somebody to check out, especially if you're. In, it's funny because her and then um, I used to watch this lady Kendall Ray. I haven't watched her in years. I kind of forgot about her. She does a lot of stuff like that, too. And they're both, like, their channels started out as, like, makeup channels. But it was just, like, one of those other things they were into and started doing videos on that. And it kind of took over. Universal thing that people enjoy. Whew! He is toast! Yeah! My sister is even more attuned. The ghost dog went in her room, walked in a circle, and lied down. Mom and me only heard the, the collar jingle. So, me and my sister have been pretty good with, have been pretty much attuned to that. And I'm, we both think my mom always was, but she just kind of never really admitted it to us. Man, I should really stop drinking of this, but it's so good. Um, like the stuff I've talked about in the um, the farmhouse in Iowa, my mom kind of dismissed it, but we're pretty sure she saw that stuff and just didn't want to like make us worry more. So for years, we knew we're all drunk. It's okay. My nephew would, like, talk about stuff when he was younger. And me and my sister kind of figured he must have inherited that, too. But we, we didn't want to tell him that. And it wasn't until he and I... That video that I posted where we caught that thing on tape... That was actually the night. Because that was in 2015, I believe. So he would have been, like, 19. And, um... It was like 2015, 2014. That was the night we uh, we went out there and he was talking to me. He goes, you know, he's like, whenever I feel like this stuff's around because I get this feeling. He's like, he's like, you know, it's like, uh, he's like, it's like when you have like butterflies in your stomach, but but more. He's like, I'm, he's like, I'm not really sure how to explain. He's like, he's like, it's butterflies in your stomach on steroids. And I was like, yeah, I know you get that. And he goes, how? And I'm like, here's the thing, man. Me, your mom, and your grandmother are all like. Have the, are, are basically low-level mediums. We can sense that stuff. I was like, mm, all three of us figured you had it too. And he's like, why did you tell me? It's like, because you would make shit up, man. It's like, you, like he got in trouble when for in school in school when he was like six or seven because he was constantly talking about like seeing ghosts on the playground. And like my my sister was like, I checked the playground out. There was nothing there. 
It's like he, he can't have it any more than you or me. And even if he did, like, it's like, you know, would have sent something. And we knew he was just doing it for attention, so we didn't we didn't want to tell him he had that ability. <laughs> Cause we didn't want to like then he might run with it, you know. So when he's like eighteen, I'm like, yeah, here's the deal. You've got that intuition, run with it. <laughs> my sister's uh always my sister saw a ghost on the beach, I was always kinda jealous. You can't tell me otherwise, it was a ghost dog. Then one day it stopped. Yeah, no, that that's how it is. So yeah, I eventually told my nephew. Not yeah, not everyone has that intuition. So the best one, the night we got that ghost on tape. I have video of part of this. We'll let the credits play here for a second. There is a big kind of like lake in Kowalska, Wisconsin. And then it leads into the river and I don't, I think that might be the start of the Milwaukee River, I, but it might be something else. But this river goes down through West Bend and everything. Anyway, my nephew saw um, a body hanging off the, there's a dam there. My nephew saw a body hanging there on his way to school one day. But he's in high school. <coughs> he had asked the teachers about it. And the teachers were like, it's nothing, don't worry about it. He never found anything more about it. My sister had heard about it, but, like, just that there was a... Somebody had committed suicide. One of my nephew's friends at school had committed suicide. That had made the news. But even now, I forget the kid's name, but I used to have it. We'd Google his name even within, like, six months of it happening, and you couldn't find any information. It's like, why is this town, like, covering this shit up? And I worked with another guy who lived in Kowaskum. I asked him about the body on the dam, and he goes, oh, there's been multiple suicides there. So me and my nephew went there. I've got, I've still got the video. It's the same night we went to the Holy Mary's. And we just did a quick video of him, because it was night. We didn't think the video would turn out. It was like my nephew standing under a streetlight, just giving his account of what had happened. Um, we walked out on the dam. We get to about the middle of the dam, because he's like, this is about where the, the the body is, and this is when my nephew is working in a, he's working part-time in this dairy factory, and he's working in the freezer. My nephew is like 6'2", and like 200 and some pounds, totally solid. He does not get cold easy. I mentioned the story in the Ouija Butcher about, him, about it giving him that curse that it called Appa and how he felt cold. But this is a man who would go out in like 10 degree weather and like a tank top and shorts and sandals. And be complain that he was too hot. He'd be sweating. We get to the middle of this bridge, and he starts shivering. And he's wearing like long pants and a hoodie, and he's shivering. And he's like, "I'm so cold." I'm like, "So am I." And uh, he's and, and, and the way he described it is exactly that was. But his exact words were, "I'm not cold, but it feels like my bones are cold." That is exactly. It felt like your your bones were shivering, not your skin. And, uh, we both felt it was just, it wasn't an evil presence, but it felt like something was angry. Something was angry was that, was that we were there. And then you would be in the middle of this bridge and we could walk to the right or to the left, but either way we walked off of this bridge, the further away from the bridge you got, the, like the feeling would go away and you got warmer and then you go back and it would get colder and you'd get that angry feeling. So about a year later, we take a friend of mine who's a, who, who said she was psychic. And I had no reason to doubt her. She had definitely shown all this stuff. I was like, she's definitely more powerful than us. Let's take her. She knew nothing about this. We go out there. We walk out there. We don't say anything to her. We tell her about anything the year before. We go out to the middle of, the, the middle of this, this dam. Because you can walk all the way across the top of this dam. She just stops. She goes, feels like my bones are cold. Not my skin, my bones. And we just kind of looked at each other and we're like, and she goes, there's something angry here. It doesn't want us here. And she kind of looks out over the water. She goes, somebody hung themselves right there. A few people have hung themselves right there, but there's one in particular. And we're just like, how the hell did she know this? That was the one we also took. We took her back to Holy Mary's and she 
was able to recant like everything we saw at Holy Mary's and caught on camera without having seen that that footage before or anything too. So that was cool. Not everyone. Else. Have you been to the home on the rock? I may have asked before. Looks. So, I have not been to that. Okay, so House on the Rock is a place me and my sister always wanted to go to. Let me change this game real quick. Let's put in Popeye. Woo! Yep, yeah, feeling the alcohol. I, I, I've not played this game in so long, I don't even remember how to play it. So House on the Rock is one of those places me and my sister always wanted to go to as kids. We always wanted to stop at all these roadside attractions. Like, there was a, there's this pink elephant statue in Iowa, right in, right on the Mississippi. It's like a pink elephant with the top hat. I gotta lose the hat. I just, I can't do it no more. So, uh, that was almost three hours wearing a hat, man. I, that's, that's pretty impressive with me. My wife and I want to go one day. So we stopped at the... On our way back from my dad's wedding, we had stopped at all those places we always wanted to stop at. It's because, like, we stopped and, and saw the pink elephant and all that. One of them was the House of the Rock. That was the only time we stopped in the House of the Rock, and they were closed. We were, like, outside the gate, but we weren't there. But, yeah, so I know of the House of the Rock, and I've been, like, outside the House of the Rock, but I've never been to it. But I remember watching, um, as a kid, watching a, um, <laughs> watched a documentary on PBS on it, and I, yeah, like, I, I need to go see that, it just seems like a really cool place, and it's right here, if you, if you and, and, and Liz ever get out this way, to go see that, let me know, I will meet up with you guys, to, to go see that, and, and if you want, like, come back to Milwaukee, the Milwaukee area, I will take you around, like, to, to things like the, um, the Paps Mansion and stuff like I will I will gladly show you guys shit like that. Oh, got I, I know I know you got to get the hearts, but I don't remember what all you got to do. My wife and I go most stuff. Yeah, no. If you guys ever find yourselves out here, I'm especially like um, I will take you to the two retro game stores here. In Sheboygan, if you want free toys and game gamer generations, um, we could try and always meet up with um Captain Algebra out in Madison as well. He is such a cool. He is such like I I, I enjoy his channel, but then meeting him last year at um Midwest Gaming Expo, you know this alcohol like I'm not drunk, but it's like I don't. I just played the game and I don't even remember it. Yes, Captain Algebra is a cool guy. We could we could always see if we could meet up with him as well. He just got over. I think he had pneumonia. He ended up being like hospitalized and everything. Come here. Yeah. That's what Popeye's like. I can't. I cannot do a Popeye. Like it's just. This is a good game, though, like, when you're sober and you know what the hell it is you're doing. <laughs> Can't get me, Bluto. I'm down here. Son of a bitch. Damn it. <laughs> There's a uh, form hedge in West Virginia, Virginia. Butterfly farm that's some dinosaurs and Confederate soldiers thing. Let me tell you, man, West Virginia. When I was driving from Wisconsin to um, North Carolina the first time, West Virginia was the most gorgeous thing. Because, like, the freeways are all up in the mountains, like, going around the mountains, but then the cities are in the valleys below you, and you can't, you can't describe that to somebody. Like, I mean, I just did, but it doesn't, it doesn't do it justice. And then, um, you know, my, my dad went with me the last time, and then he saw it for himself. He's like, 
you weren't kidding. This was incredible. You just, you can't describe it. Like, it's just, it's unreal. I love just driving through that area. It was, it was so gorgeous. Like, you, you gotta experience it for yourself, you know? Oh, yeah, there we go. Got it. Bam, yeah. Collecting those hearts, baby. Oh, yeah. Oh, man. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm so... There it is. So, for the last time, I could not snap my fingers till I was, like, 27, 26, 27. But I would do like that when I'd get nervous. And just, like, one day I was like, hey, I can now snap my fingers or something. But I can't really do it with the left. Like, I'm, after all these years, I'm, almost a decade later, I can almost do it. That is my claim to fame, my friend. Natural Bridge, Virginia is the foam hinge. And yeah. Dude, West Virginia is... It gets a bad rep, but it's it's so, so gorgeous. So this is the police department. Um, our first day in the police academy, they wanted everybody to introduce each other. And the one dude was from uh, was from West Virginia. Was it West Virginia? Is West Virginia or Virginia one of the two? He was from the Virginia area. And he had made a joke. He's like, you know, he's like, he's like I'm, you know, my name's whatever. I'm from West Virginia. And he goes, I'm married. He goes, I know what you're thinking. She's not my sister, though. She's my cousin. And she said he, he was. He was married to, like, it was like a second or third cousin. It was totally legal, but he, he, he definitely went for that joke and just owned it. It was great. Going through, you can cross the West Vir the Virginia, West Virginia multiple times. Yes. Yeah, going through all those mountain tunnels, man. Oh. Ugh. Just stop for one second. Because I have a tiny bladder and I have to pee for the third time in about three hours. And James, you are being the most talkative one. What do you want to see, man? Puss in Boots or the Rocketeer? I will leave it up to you. I will suck at either one because I'm so wasted right now. Well, I almost just fell down the stairs, so let's sit down. Uh, I thought we played Rocketeer many years ago on a rental. Puss in Boots. Okay. Puss in Boots. It is Paro's Grand Adventure. Now, you're probably thinking, Paro is the Spanish word for dog. And why is it called Paro if he's a cat? It's because, um, because, um, when Toei Animation made the movie, they named a Pero after the author of the original, uh, story, Puss in Boots. I think it was like Perot or per Perot, something like that. So they named him after, so that's why he's Pero in the, in, in the movies and then in this game. I know I said I wouldn't stop till I hit the bottom of this 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 horn filled with glory. 
but I'm a little over halfway. The stream may end before I get to the end of this because I might pass out. I knew this was a bad idea when I started. It's bad for my liver and my brain, but it was good for my soul. And in the end, is that not what truly matters? Well, I'm still coherent enough. I still remember everything that's happened. That's the... So, in the movie, um, Puss in Boots Around the World in 80 Days, he makes this bet with this, um, this other cat that he can travel the world in 80 days, and if he doesn't do it, he'll be the cat's slave or something for life. But we having fun. We are most definitely. So this is, you go around the world, much like in the movie. The final, there's a big confrontation in the clock tower at the end of the movie that the game does recreate that. Um, like I said, I do have the first movie on DVD. I have it here. It's, it's in Bunny's room. This is why Bunny is not here, because he might have, like, walked under me, and I might have sat under him. Because I wanted to have him out here for the stream, but I was like, nah, I, I might get wasted and not pay attention and, like, sit on him or something. So these other casts, those are the Three Musketeers in Boots. They're, they, that's where the second movie got its name. So the story in the first film is that Paro won't kill mice. So the other cats basically send him into exile because he won't kill kill the mice. Because <laughs> cats are supposed to kill mice. This sounds like I'm way more drunk than I am, but I'm not. This is legit the movie. So these three other mice are, he like, I think he's like sentenced to death or something. Because Japan, it's a kid's movie, but they'll sentence somebody to death. So these three other cats, the three mus that they refer to as the three musketeers, are sent after, like to, to arrest him or whatever. He's always trying to avoid him. Which is why the second movie is Three Musketeers in Boots. Except in the U.S. where it's Ringo Rides West. Whoever the fuck Ringo is. I have beaten this game. I have beaten it. And this is... I'm not beating it today. <laughs> so... Yeah, so this is based on the third movie, but the Three Musketeers would still be after him. Let's go get this money. I think in the English version of the movie that this game is based off of, they, like, changed his name to, like, Poosty or something. Poosty? <laughs> something weird like that. Oh, man. I, I've had it. Hey, dude. Why are you sleep? Game over on the first love, people. We are not doing so hot. Oh, yeah. I wanted to tell you more stories about Patrick Turner. I mean, I haven't seen the guy since 2005. No. Since we're on the story, we were talking about ghost stories, I will tell you one story. I did see him once. I have had, um, where, you know, they say the dead can contact you in dreams. I've had that happen with certain people a few times. Like my mother, my uncle, or my, my mother's uncle, my great uncle. Patrick came to me once. And I don't remember the whole conversation. But I do remember just... I asked him, like, what afterlife he was in. He was like, you know, like, the Christian heaven, whatever. And I, remember, I just remember asking, what's heaven like? And he gave me the most Patrick Turner answer ever. He just looks at me and goes, it's all right. <laughs> it's just, like, only he would say something like that. I just remember him telling me, like, you know, he's like, I'm, I'm glad you remember me, and I'm glad, you know, you've, you've been the one... He's like, you don't need to worry about me. I'm, he's like, you know, it's, it's over. I've moved on. I'm, I'm good. 
And he's like, but I'm glad you, you always, he's like, you always be thinking about me, so. I just, that I remember. But, uh, I just remember waking up and thinking about his reaction, like, yeah, heaven's alright. Just, like, cracking up laughing about that. Oh, man. So, me and Patrick were doing this, the, the Fleet Marine Force course. Which I, I ended up not completing, but... Because they, like, gave me half the manual, and I kept asking them for the full... And they, like, screwed me over on that. That's a whole different story. I'm not even getting into that. But, um... We were doing that, and we were at Camp Kinzer in Okinawa, and that was being held on one of the bases on the more northern end of the island. I think Camp Hansen, maybe? Might have been even further north than that. Hansen might have been the one that Sean was at. So we would drive up there every day. We'd get to get up like at 5 in the morning. He'd come pick me up. We'd drive up there, and we'll listen to NPR, because like the only... Only radio station we get is NPR. NPR is freaking awesome, by the way, aside from, like, everybody whispers on that channel. <laughs> I never understand. I, I, I do appreciate that Family Guy made fun of that. Because, like, I always thought it was just me. Like, it sounds like everybody's whispering. But anyway, I am a lifelong fan of RC Cola. I love RC Cola. It, it, it's a little, like, you know, your taste buds change as you get older. And it's just... The older I get, it just, it's like a little too sweet for me. I should have some RC Cola right now. But, um, so we're, we're, we're listening to uh, NPR, and this guy does this essay on RC Cola, which is cool for me, because I'm like 21, 22, and that's my drink. And we're going to this class, and every day we go to the, the base PX, and we I, I buy like two RC Colas, one for my lunch, and one for later on in the afternoon. And this guy's talking, giving this essay about RC Cola, how like, <coughs> it's kind of the forgotten cola, nobody really cares about it. And he's describing the taste, and I, you know, I never really thought about like the taste of RC, RC is pretty good. Yes, it is, sir. Yes, it is. And in, in, in North Carolina, you know, a North Carolina lunch is an RC Cola and a Moon Pie. So, you know. So the guy talking about the taste of RC Cola, and he refers to it as having a tangy taste. And I'm like sitting in the car, I'm like, it's not tangy, what the hell is this guy talking? Like, I drink like two of these a day. And, and Patrick's like, so what does it taste like? And I'm like, well, I've never really thought about it. So, this is like 6, you know, 5.30, 6 in the morning. We go to class. We break for lunch. We go to the PX. I buy my two RC Colas. It's just like six hours later. Open up my RC Cola. I go. It is tangy. <laughs> Patrick looks at me. He's like, what? I'm like, it's subtle. It's more of an aftertaste. There's like a couple of different flavors, but yeah, they like it's it's the aftertaste, but it's the one that's most pronounced. It's more like Pepsi than Coke, but different from both. Yeah, yeah, because it's really sweet. And Patrick is just laughing, and it just became this joke, like because he would pick up the mail for 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 the chaplain's office, and he, he if there's anything for me, he'd bring. He usually stop by my office and just chill out for like you know half an hour to an hour if, if they weren't bu if he wasn't busy, and we just shoot the shit or whatever. Every day, for the next about year and a half, he'd go to check the mail. He was in, he'd come into my office. He was just walk in the door. He doesn't even say hi. He just walks in there and be like, it is tangy. That was his greeting for me from that point on. And he was, like, you would think that would get old, but the way he would say it, the, the, the big grin, the smile that man had, it was like you were hearing it the first time, every time. It, it was always funny. He's walking in the room. It is tangy. 
<laughs> so that was when I learned how much she liked vodka. Was was that like two weeks we were doing that course? I must be really out of it because I've cleared this game. I don't think I've ever no death from this game, but I've cleared it pretty easily. There's been times I've gotten to the end of the game and just be like, yeah, I'm tired of turning it off. It's like I've beaten it. It's good. I can't even get past the first level. Let us switch to the Rocketeer. Then I will continue the vodka story. Cause you, you, you are here for the vodka story. Possibly also the game. Play. Oh, yeah, the Rocketeer. I freaking love this game. Not the Super Nintendo version, just the, the 8 bit Nintendo. Hey, Bob is back. That is a drink for Bob being back. I like how my little glitch on the bottom of my screen is still showing stuff from Kirby. Appreciate that little glitch on the bottom of the screen. I don't know how to change that, and I just accept it as my thing. So, Patrick, um... I knew he liked vodka, but he... We were there. We were at the PX at the space, and they had um, Grey Goose on uh, on sale, and he's like, "Oh, that's like the best stuff." And it would it was so funny because then from like you you knew if he got Grey Goose, which is his favorite, because he he went and bought a bunch of bottles of that that week. But you know he'd get that because he would like on Friday afternoon he'd he'd be all like, "The goose is loose." <laughs> <laughs> I'll never forget. So, you know, Chris, he's from Louisiana. We had a Popeyes on the, the main base. I forget what the big base was in Okinawa. Belvedere, Rocketeer, not a great movie. Dude, Rocketeer is like one of my all-time favorite movies. I, I will get into that in a minute. I clearly did not pause the game because I am dead. I love that game over screen. That's a really good game over screen. Um, but yeah, so he's, he's from, he's from Louisiana. We, we would have a Popeye's and they had to sign on Pop on the Popeye's and something says something like, Ooh, that's good chicken. He would like, if we were going to get pop, he wouldn't even ask like, Hey, you want to get Popeye's? He'd be like, Ooh, we're that's good chicken. And you knew we were going to stop at Popeye's that day. So the Rockets here, like, it's funny because as much of a movie buff as I am, and I've always been fascinated and wanted to get into, like, filmmaking and, and everything. Um, I didn't really get to go to too many movies as a kid. Uh, the Rocketeer, the summer it played, my, my sister was at her Girl Scout camp. And my parents decided to take me to a movie. And uh, Shell Rock, Iowa did not have a movie theater. You had to go to the next town over, Waverly. They had a movie house. Popeye says, great chicken strips and mashed tea. I don't know. I haven't had Popeye's in years, man. Anyway, um, so you had to go to Waverly, which is like, it, so Shell Rock was really small. There was about 1,200 people. I think it still is about 1,200 people, too. So small that the, um, the, the school system is combined. Do the grenade. Um, like... Our, Shell Rock has an elementary school, and that's really it. And then middle school. The middle schools, I know most middle schools are like 7, 6, 7, and 8th grade. But because they combined Waverly and Shell Rock schools. In the middle school, there was one middle school. It was it was 6, it was just like 7th and 8th grade. And then the high school was, was high school for all of them. So, um, we go, we, we would go to the movie house, which only, which only had two screens. It had like one really big screen and then a small screen. But anyway, so my sister's at Girl Scout camp. So my parents wanted to do something for me. So they took me to the movies and the movie they, that was playing, cause you, there's two movies playing. Usually one of them was something like R rated or whatever. So my parents ended up taking me to see the Rocketeer cause it was what was playing. And I had watched like some of like the behind the scenes stuff on the Disney channel and stuff. I didn't really think it was anything that I would be really interested in, though. 
But I just, I fell in love with the movie. It was For, the, for most of my life, it was my, my favorite movie. So I really wanted this game. This is my favorite movie. And I could not, like, I'd go to, like, Funko Land or whatever, and they would never have it in stock. And then it was Christmas. It must have been, like, 96 or 97. I was at a Walmart getting, getting my Christmas shopping done. It was, like, it was like Christmas Eve, too. You know, I was just a kid. I was like 13, 13, 12 or 13. And I was just doing what I could with my saved up allowance. And I was going through the clearance rack outside the... Uh, that was dumb. Going through the clearance rack outside the electronics department. And they had, I guess, found like overstock stuff. And one of the things in the overstock was this copy of this game for the Rocketeer on the NES. Again, this was like 96, 97. They weren't selling NES games at this point, and there it was. The Rocketeer was huge, but it kind of bombed, but it was kind of prolific. Yes, yes it was. So, I had to buy this for myself. It was like 10 bucks. And, 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 it, and it just, I spent forever playing this game. It was everything I wanted. To, I know a lot of people don't really care for it because, like, the rocket pack, it, you can only really use the rocket in certain parts of the game. And there's parts where it's like, oh, no, I'm out of fuel, or oh, no, I'm out of bullets, and that kind of sucks. It happens a little too much. But as far as like a run and gun shooter style game goes, it's it's pretty good. Uh, doesn't look it here because I'm, I'm wasted and I'm not doing good, but it is actually a lot of fun. So that was kind of my my the Rocketeer. I, just, I love this movie so damn much. Like it was one of the few movies that's like it's like Ninja Turtles three, except Ninja Turtles three. I could sit here and say, yeah, that's not really a good movie. But I got to see it in theaters, and, and having only like gotten to see a handful of movies in theaters as a kid, it, it just, it means a lot to me just from that point, but I just, I love the movie, and I don't think it gets enough recognition. Years later, I found the graphic novel it's based on, and it's just, the graphic novel is so different from the movie, like, you gotta, you gotta read that and see the movie, they're so different. 96 and 97 Toys R Us still sold any of systems and games. Jennifer Connelly was dope, Labyrinth, and Phenomenon too. I've never seen Phenomenon, but dude, Labyrinth, I've not seen Labyrinth in forever, but, but, yes, it's right here. I've not even opened this yet. I've had this for about two years, but the Labyrinth board game. There's also one for the Dark Crystal. I really need to get that as well. Need to play this at some point. Possibly do a video for it. That I did get at the game board over here, and they have the Dark Crystal game up at the other game store, Victory Games. I need to pick that up. But, you know, I've done a lot of stuff for the game board because they've done a lot of stuff for me. I did get that copy of that game there. Same time I got uh, Ascension Gift of the Elements. Man, that was almost three years ago. And that thing is still wrapped. I remember buying Zelda Ocarina of Time and there being NES top loaders in games. Yeah, some places had it, some of them didn't. I remember wanting to be the Rocketeer and uh, making like a costume. And it was like this Milwaukee Brewers baseball helmet and I turned it around backwards so it looked like it had the rudder. And then I put like a round bucket, like an ice cream, like a Schwann's ice cream bucket in a backpack to get the round look of the rocket pack. Even though it's like the worst rocket pack ever, it would have burned his ass off. The best scene of a guy with a rocket pack. So back in the 70s, I think it was Aston Martin built like a, they called it the rocket belt. To keep from burning your, your ass off, the actual part that, that, had the exhaust kind of spat out and down. Anyway, it's used in the Jim Kelly movie, Black Samurai Agent of Dragon, which I have. So if you don't know Jim Kelly, you probably do know Jim Kelly. 
Remember Edge of the Dragon, the black dude with the afro? That's Jim Kelly. Jim Kelly made a bunch of like martial arts black exploitation films after Enter the Dragon. They are glorious. He actually, they filmed a cameo for him in Undercover Brother, because Undercover Brother was basically a, uh, a sort of a parody of his films. But I guess, from what I've heard, they ended up cutting it from the film because nobody understood who he was. Like, who's this guy? What's up with this cameo? So it was ultimately cut from the film. Anyway. So Jim Kelly made this movie, Black Black Samurai, Asian of Dragon. It's oddly enough based on a series of novels. And it's, it's one of those things where Dragon is an acronym much like S.H.I.E.L.D. in the DC comics. Where it's it's a ridiculous... I can't even remember what it stands for, but it's, it's pretty ridiculous. But there is a scene where he uses the Ashton Martin rocket belt. Most of it is stock footage of tests from... Because the belt, co it can only fly for like 30 seconds. So it goes in like an arc, and it's great. So to create this effect, Jim Kelly rules, fuck yeah. To create this effect, they're showing multiple shots of the, the rocket belt in action, but it's going in this arc. So you see him going up, and then he'll start descending... And then I'll cut to another shot of him going up, and then the second he starts descending, it's the next shot. But the best part about this movie is when he goes and suits up, he puts the rocket belt on, like, you know, it's, it's a rocket pack, it goes on like a backpack. He pulls out this huge freaking helmet. The helmet is actually designed to fit over his afro. <laughs> puts the thing on, it's ginormous to fit over his afro. It is great. I freaking love that movie. There's, there's a scene where he like, goes to save this woman and she says something like, well, aren't you the white knight? Because, you know, he's Jim Kelly and it's a black dragon. You know, he's like, baby, I ain't never the white knight. <laughs> oh, man. that movie. He did so many cool movies like that. Uh, Death Dimension was another one I remember. Um, uh, black Belt Jones. Black Belt Jones was a good one. And then, um, oh, what was that one where he's in Hong Kong? Tattoo Connection. Hot Potato, yes, Hot Potato was another one. Thank you, James. Jim Kelly does not get enough credit. That dude was freaking awesome. He was actually, um, a big, uh, tennis player as well as martial artist. He was actually making his, most of his living he made as a tennis instructor. So in Black Samurai, there's actually a scene at the beginning of the film where he's like playing tennis with this with this girl, and it's, it's not like a random thing. It's like no, he was he was legit a tennis player, and like a, like the dude was a phenomenal martial artist. And from what I've heard, he was an even better um, tennis player. So Jim Kelly is was was the shit man. There was a set they used to sell at um. I just spilled mead. I'm not the type to lick it up off the floor, but that is a shame. Jim Kelly, there was a set, like, you know, they did, like, the, the film favorites. Like, this one's, like, all the Matrix films, the Animatrix, and, um, there's, like, four of the Hammer Dracula films, even though there's way more than four of those films. It's, like, every other one. There was a set, it was, like, four of the Jim Kelly films. They had, like, Death Dimension and Hot Potato and Black Belt Jones, I think. Yeah. One second, please. I think we are pretty much done gaming, but before we do this, here is your Jim Kelly, Black Samurai, Agent of Dragon, based on the novels. The, like, yeah, you can't go wrong. And then, because we, we mentioned, here's the disc for um, the first of the Puss in Boots, released by Discotech. Let me tell you, 
They got nothing to do with each other, but I highly recommend both. On that note, I cannot continue streaming without going completely crazy because I have drank too much and I have so much more to drink. But we did complete Kirby's Adventure and we didn't do jack shit with the Rocketeer, Popeye, or the cat game. He's a cat with the sword, and he's not Antonio Banderas. He's way cooler than that. And Antonio Banderas as a cat is pretty freaking cool. Right, Thor? So, also, I... I work nights, you know, and it is like 5 p.m. I am ready to lay down on this grand couch of things. So, this was my memorial stream for Petty Officer First Class Patrick John Turner, who would have downed this whole thing and not blunked. Blink? 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 He'd be in better shape than I am. But that's all I need. Thank you, James and Bob, especially for hanging out with me. Three and a half hours. I don't know if this is... Longer than my, my, the day I played all the soccer games, but I appreciate it. Entertaining. Talk the whole time. I did talk the whole time, but I'm also kind of plastic. Um, so thank you guys for watching. Anybody who watches this later, if they can suffer through it, I appreciate you watching this. Most importantly, though, do not forget those who have fallen. Do not, don't take people for granted. You know, like, Patrick was 40, like, 41, 42 years old, starting a whole new life, and just retired from the Navy, and he was just gone, like, in the blink of an eye, and you don't know when your time's coming, man, and maybe you choose to end it, or somebody ends it on you, or it happens naturally, there's so many ways it can go, just, the people that you love, let them know. Okay, you've got to let them know well you can because you don't know. And, and, and that could also mean the difference. Like, let them know you care. Let them know that they matter to you, to somebody, because maybe they don't feel like, like they're loved. Maybe they feel alone, you know. Don't, don't wait. Don't ever wait because... You might not have it tomorrow. It's it's a grim thought, but it's it's the reality. So, if you take anything away from this, aside from the fact that I can beat Kirby wasted, but I can't do shit with the Rocketeer, Popeye, or or Puss in Boots, go find your loved ones tonight. Let them know that they matter to you, please. I am Folk Raven Bear, and this is my good friend Thor, and that is the best mead ever. Thanks for watching. Glad you were here. Have a great day, everyone. Have a great weekend. Don't forget, let people know that they matter to you, because they may not even feel that they matter to themselves, but they know that they matter to somebody that'll That'll definitely keep them going. I'm speaking from experience there. So, uh, we'll give one more to my good friend Patrick Turner. Be he in heaven, like was in my dream, or Valhalla, or wherever. That is for you, buddy. Take care of yourself.